could be one of many. Yo, 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 hello, hello, witch cat, bonjour, Martin, Martin, dude, we gotta talk about that video, man, that's crazy, kind of shocked because of that metahuman thing, yeah, that thing is insane, man, that's ridiculous, hello, Carde. Hello, hello, yeah, though, you, yeah, that's, it's funny, it's like, it looks so realistic, but it has just the slightest hint that it's, that it's 3D, but it's getting so good that we're starting to have a hard time telling the difference between the two. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, had a couple random sneezes show up. Yeah, it's insane to me. Taking my vitamins, by the way. I feel like we're gonna see a lot of it, of insane new indie games with that epic, with what Epic brings out. Yeah, absolutely. It's funny to see that Epic seems to be uh, going more realistic and away from the stylized stuff. Really pushing it. Um, almost, yeah. Basically, my adult gummy vitamins by Kirkland. <laughs> what is up, Emmy? Hello, hello. I'm taking my vitamins this morning. You guys can watch my routine. Oh, uh, how are you guys? Oh, I'm here early today. Actually, I'm four minutes late. <laughs> Yeah, I go uh, nine. I go nine a.m. to three p.m. right now, but if um, hopefully contract work will pick up a little bit more, and then I'll actually have to dial that back. What I'm thinking about doing is if I start picking up more contract work and I have to stop streaming for so long, my thought is I'll actually stream like a couple hours in the morning, like I normally would, just to warm up and then and then exit out and go to work. That's the thought. This looks almost finished. Nice job. Yeah, it is almost finished. Today, we're basically gonna just paint it. 
like really paint it like really get into some details add some bruising um i like to take my my statues to fully paint it conce uh conceptually so that i get an idea on if i do decide to actually paint it or if i have somebody paint it um i'll have a better idea of um how it how i want it to look so taking drugs to avoid a cold lol yeah <laughs> Not much, just struggling to fix a mesh and work, but you know, yeah, yeah, I feel ya. So, yeah, so today we're just gonna be painting and then um, maybe decimating for a render in Marmoset tool bag, which will be fun. And then after that, I think it's we're gonna start going towards slicing and dicing for 3D print, um, which, which is really what I'm excited about the most. We'll have to take some measurements, make sure that it's uh, the size we want it to be. Um, in fact, we can do that right now. We can just go ahead and take this cube. This cube I have is about, I wanted it to be about a foot tall. So let's actually, let's scale this to be about that. Which, yeah, that looks good. And then let's actually go ahead and go to Scale Master. Let's set scene scale. Yeah, 317 millimeters. Perfect. And then update sales, scale size. So we're good to go. I'm gonna need my glasses today. My eyes are a little tired. I had weird, crazy dreams last night. Part of my dream last night was like I was taking a Harley motorcycle and somebody was on the back. I don't know who was on the back, but I was, I was, I was basically I was basically not riding it, I was like dragging it up flights of stairs. So I woke up very exhausted. <laughs> Don't forget Stream Raiders! Uh, never. <laughs> so I woke up very exhausted, very tired. It's kind of crazy. I also had this crazy- it was like kind of like attack, ti attack on Titans on top of um... Oh, there's an update guys. On top of uh... Like, because at one point I was in the car talking to somebody and I was winning the argument and then all of a sudden half the car gets stepped on and he dies. <laughs> and then and I was like, okay, well, there, I, I win, I guess. There's the argument. And then I got out and hopped on a motorcycle and started riding and then came across stairs and was like, well, I got to get it up there. And I got off and like hoisted it up. And there was a person on the back who was not being helpful. <laughs> It was very funny. It's a very bizarre dream. Um, I'm updating Stream Raiders while we talk. So yeah, it was uh, so weird. So I feel super exhausted. I think mainly I started working out again, uh, trying to get back into somewhat physical shape. And I think maybe my mind is just like saying, you feel like you've done all this. J Crew, what is happening? Ooh, I got the... Uh, Stream, uh, uh, restream is not telling me exactly how many people are here, so it says I have zero people here. So we're flying by the seat of our pants today. All right. Here we go. Ready to battle. There you go, Carde. Ready to battle. But all right. I'm excited to get to painting. Painting's gonna be good. It's gonna be, uh, nice and kind of seamless. We are all ghosts, absolutely. Oh yeah. How is everybody else doing? Martin, how's your project coming along, buddy? Oh. Got new quests. Oh man. They keep stacking shit on me. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to keep up. Let's see here. Warrior scrolls, warrior scrolls. Just gonna just gonna buy all these scrolls. Or a figment of his imagination. Yeah. My dream was very matrixy. There was another part where I was at a uh, an old friend's house where like um there's this place I used to use this people I used to know that used to babysit me. We became friends. I became friends with their kids. I was in there too. Hey, thank you so much, Michael. Um, and they were there too. We were having a weird argument. That was just all over the place. So you could be. 
Can I post an image in the Discord if you want? Yeah, of course, dude. Of course. You don't have to ask, my friend. <laughs> you don't have to ask, my friend. All right. Let's get that guy set there. All right, I got to do that one more time. Hopefully, I can do that by the end of the stream. All right. All right, let's get to it. So we've sized we've sized our our model and we got 317 millimeters. So just because I don't feel like mathing this morning, millimeter to inches. We're looking at 12 and a half inches, so a little over a foot. That's about our scale. So it's a big boy. That's a that's a nice big size. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> not that you guys can see it, but that's um, one and a half. Uh, no, a little over. It's like one and a third Starbucks cups. <laughs> that's how we measure shit around here. You missed a character in my sentence. Can I post a image in the Discord if you want? No, you could. Yes, I, I didn't miss a character. I can post an image in the Discord if you want. Yes, OK, sure. Do it, buddy. <laughs> Do it. Oh, I can. No, there's not. It doesn't. You're a figment of my imagination, Mark. <laughs> you should put your Discord server in your profile because there's no, there's nowhere to find it. It's actually in the About section. If you, there should be. There's also that right there. Yes, you. Yes, yes, you. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I agree with you, Martin. I missed it. <laughs> Told you I was tired. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, there's a Discord command. Yeah. All right. Anyway, guys. How is everybody doing? Like I said, we're going to be painting. We're going to start with her. We're gonna end up painting her right now. And we're actually gonna go up the subdivision and let's sew this out. And basically we're gonna start with warming up the body. It's a little cold right now. It's just a standard skin tone and there's not a whole lot of uh, warmth to it. So that's the first thing I like to do. So we're gonna grab some red, a little bit of pink, and we're just gonna go ahead and quickly apply where colors should be and go from there. He carried a motorcycle on a flight of stairs. This man is tired. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a cold today. I know. Yep. Could be. You know, it really could be. All right, let's grab our paintbrush. And let's drop that intensity really, really low. And then let's... I like to turn off Lazy Mouse. And then we're just going to go ahead and start adding some... Rosy cheeks a little bit. And pretty much anywhere that's close to the surface of the where blood would be close to the surface. So ears, cheeks, forehead, chin. So they're all where blood flows and it's pretty visible if you if you look at it. IR sculpts. I posted the image in Discord. Perfect. Thanks, buddy. There we go. Nice, man. Nice. Ooh. I know it's probably not supposed to look this way, but it's looking very gothy. I like it. Very library, yes. I like seeing it at this point because now I'm starting to actually see what you what you're what you're going for. But I always love seeing all the UV, like the, the, the checkered board maps and the seeing how it all wraps around. It's really cool. Yeah, this is very cool, man. I love your I love your your pieces. They're so cool.
Yeah, if you uh, if you spend all night carrying a motorcycle up a flight of stairs, you're probably going to be tired too. <laughs> there we go. I also want to take the time to make sure that we really bruise and uh, end up um, really making these cuts look nasty and gnarly. So we're going to do a little bit of that too today. And so I'm just going to be painting it as if you could see everything, just because of where most of everything lies. Let's also get the smooth brush out. We're going to smooth just the color. Some of this color got a little muddled, muddied. So we can go ahead and... And it's going to be more red where there's cuts, naturally. So we'll make sure to really enhance a lot of red in that area, because blood is flowing, and it's going to look agitated. And then we'll go in with some deep purples and uh, and deep reds to really emphasize that wound. Hey, what's up, Christopher? How you doing, buddy? How goes it? Welcome in, welcome in. All right, let's go ahead and we'll grab the skin tone as well to help kind of blend some of this together. Just any part that looks a little too dark or too funky. We'll just switch back to the original skin tone and dial that back. I don't like to control Z when I'm painting. I like to just build the layers. I feel like it's a little bit more helpful and kind of brings up the realism a bit. So if I take it too far, I just go back over it with a skin tone color and that gives you kind of a pink look, which is usually what you're going for anyway. Sup, sup, Dr. Isle, how you doing? Doing good, and thank you for the feedback on Discord yesterday. Of course, man. Absolutely. Glad I could help. And yeah, we just we just started. Yeah, you you missed the uh, the, the just missed the the groggy me feeling like I keep, <laughs> my dreams are crazy last night, man. <laughs> so uh, Michael asks, can you make money by just by sculpting? It's funny. I have this mindset of everything has to be retopologized and sent into Maya Blender, etc for films and games uh well if you're that's the thing so if you are working in games then or film then you do want to do more than sculpting you do want to learn retopology and you you are going to want to make sure that you understand the process of um you know uh making their mesh as clean as possible and getting it animation ready and rig ready um that being said you can make money just by being a sculptor, but typically you're not working in games or film. You're working more for toys or, um, you know, there are other jobs besides toys and games. And I think that's a big misconception. I applied for a mint job where I would be sculpting coins. Um, you can you can apply for jobs where you sculpt statues. You can just make money as a sculptor. Um, just be a really good one. That's, that's the biggest advice. Um, but you're right. When you get into the 3D world, you are inundated with games and film. And there's this mindset of, oh, I have to do all this. No, you don't have to unless you are, unless you are definitely aiming towards being in that industry. Then you really should. Uh, then you really should practice that pipeline. So for me, when it comes to working with statues and toys... My pipeline is simple. I get to sculpt it to its final uh, high res, and then I get to slice it up and get it ready for manufacturing, whether that be for 3D printing, whether that be for injection mold, uh, cast a mold, etc., etc. Um, so again, it just depends on the industry. But if your goal, like I said, is to get into games and film, you, you have to learn all that. And I learned all that too, by the way. I wasn't sure if I wanted to get into games or film. So, I learned it. Now, I realized I hated retopologizing. I didn't like spending weeks on the same project after the sculpt was completed. And then I started learning other stuff. So, when you get into toys, you still have to learn how to cut it up, how to get it ready for manufacturing. So, there's still the technical aspect that you can't avoid. It's just the one you want to... Which one of those do you want to deal with? Would you rather retopologize? You know, or would you rather slice and dice and get it ready for manufacturing? And that's a decision that you can make. Um, that being said, though, um, 
it doesn't hurt to learn it. And I actually recommend learning it because there are plenty of cases where I have decided I don't like the shirt I sculpted. I can get it cleaner. So I re it. Even though it's for toys, I re it to make it look its best. And having that knowledge only helps me make my project better. So it's really up to you. But um, I recommend at least giving it a shot. And that way you understand the process a little bit better. Um, doing good for us, uh, Doing good, man. How is your progress so far? My progress is, well, we're pretty much coming in, coming up to an end. Now we're just painting it. I really want to make it look nice. Uh, can I ask for a quick feedback on my character final post? Yes, absolutely. Yes, you can. But yeah, I get it. Uh, there's... It's, it is funny how quickly um, you just get overwhelmed with all this information of should I do all of this? Do I have to, you know, people think ZBrush and they think they think games and film. There's there's way more to it than that. So, but yeah. All right. Click, let me click your link. Oh, nice, nice, man, nice. Okay. Okay, so immediate impression is I feel like I feel like he got shot. So, like I feel like he's dying. Um, so if you're, um, are you going for a powerful pose or are you going for, um, are you going for more of a, uh, uh, yeah, what pose are you going for? That's really it. I, I feel like he's kind of falling over right now. There's not a lot of information, but I can guide you on why I feel that way. Going for a powerful raw pose. Okay, perfect. So the very first thing I think you should do is look up, and I'm going to go back to this a hundred times. Um, go to bodybuilders, look up bodybuilders, and look up powerful, strong poses. Even something like this, for example, even though it's not exactly what you're looking for. Um, or even something like this. But look up really strong poses and then pay attention to two things. One is the line of sight, like how the character flows. But two, um, oh, I have to click the link one second. But two, the hands. The hands is what really kind of makes it feel a little frail. These hands are a little weak. So either make them together really solid or make a really strong fist and then look at some bodybuilding poses that get you close to what you want. Like if your arms are really out, then let's take a look at like, um, trying to find a good example here. Take a look at some of these poses. See how his hands here are straight. He's kind of up. So in the same instance with something like this, he kind of feels like he's falling over. His head direction is back. So what you want to do is kind of lean him more forward. Bring, make his chest the focal point and lean him forward. Um, the pose feels a little, down here feels a little unnatural. So maybe try standing in this pose or look up a pose lunge reference. And that will help you kind of guide on how the hips should be placed. Aside from that, those are my big, big critiques. Aside from that, I think you're going into a good direction, but because his head's backwards, tilt that forward, bring that, that chest is out, so you don't have to work on that so much. You can even flail his arms out a little bit. Um, you even have one of his hands reaching for something a little bit. That, that might work too. I would definitely play around and really push it to the next level. Going for powerful, yeah. But reference is key and Posing is very difficult to get right, and it takes a long time. So don't be discouraged. Definitely, you're on the right track, but maybe try to stand this way, and if it feels off balance, maybe try to correct it and take a photo. You're your best reference. And then from there, um, just pay attention to muscle forms. And then also, like kind of how I posted a demon picture in Discord the other day, look up, um, just type in like, 
powerful demons. And then just see how people have posed their version of a demon in the past. Like, take this guy, for example. See if we can get a good... How his hands are out, his chest is up, his head is cocked, and he's just, he's really rigid. Uh, you get a sense of power and, and, and awe from this character. Um, even, too, I think you're doing more of like a vampire. You can even look up powerful vampires. And that's what I would spend time doing. Gather as much reference as poses as you can. Like, take a look at this female. Oh, here we go. Look at this. Like, this would be a really good one if it loads. Yeah, so just really gather your reference as much as you can. But you see here how, like, his head is forward, his chest is out, his arms are back. His hands are open, but they're really rigid. This is a good example of, like, standing there, but you would be scared shitless. <laughs> so really pay attention, gather all that reference up as much as you can. Um, I would say easily find like 10 different varieties of uh, poses that you like, and then look at each one, what makes it good. Um, kind of follow the spine and the line of sight of where the character's looking, how his body's arched, and then get real world reference to support that. But you're really going, you're, you're going in a good direction here, but he just looks like he's kind of falling back. And so that takes away from it. And a little bit of tweaks, like I said, bring his head forward, do something a little bit more sturdy with his hands and legs. And it'll already, those three things will already take you to the next level. Hey, Lizard, lurk, lurk, lurk. Awesome. It could be so nice one day, ZBrush. And if, wait, wait, hold on one second. I missed the comment here real quick. Look at the mannequins. Your joints are all in the uh, in the correct position and the post mannequin have all your reference yeah exactly i mean could be so nice if one day zbrush improved its uv unwrapping tools you know properly making seams packing uv islands and and such yeah definitely hey verbal processing morning man you could do a lot michael with uh uv unwrapping and zbrush you are right they could definitely improve it um there's a lot there's a lot to be improved um, but with polygrouping and UV unwrapping with polygroups, you can actually get a lot done and get some pretty clean UVs that way. But I do agree. I, I really wish you can actually control a little bit easier. They have like, um, paint methods where you can draw your seams and have it unwrapped to those seams. But I feel like that gets a little convoluted. I, most of my UV unwrapping happens in like 3D code or something. So I, yeah, I do agree with you, but you can get a lot done, which is nice. So hopefully, Chris, that worked out for you. Let me know if that worked out for you. But yeah, definitely, definitely push it. Yeah, polygroups. It'll pack. Yeah, I'll pack them from that. Exactly. What's up? That's happening. That's happening. How are you guys doing? This is where we at. If you guys are just catching up with us, this is where we at with this statue. We're just painting today. Let me actually set this right here. Like this. I'm actually can stamp that right there. As we end up painting, you guys can take a look at what, what I got going. Yeah, give some solid tips. We'll try it out after stream. Perfect. Yeah. Good, good, good. Anything that's helpful. Yep. All right. So now we're just getting a little bit more, a little bit more warmth into her. Into her. Same with the hands too. Basically, we are applying a light color of pink all over her but we're emphasizing more red in some spots than the other. And then we'll dial it back where it's too much. So it's all about layering, which even in real life, or like when you're really painting, that's a big tip is you want to just layer your colors. So don't be afraid to go a little too far and then go like, oh, that's too much. But then you layer back on the original skin tone and that starts taking it to a place that most of the time you'll be happy with. So you just kind of stack those layers up. 
Looking damn fine. Thanks, man. <laughs> they have been adding stuff to the Z modeler brush. I am crossing my fingers to, uh, to see someday the marking seams feature with it. Yeah, exactly. I agree with you completely, Michael. That would be so nice. Hey, what's up, Inspire? How you doing, buddy? How are you, my friend? Right, sell that out. I'm just kind of taking a look at where everything would be. There we go. Some nice light coat of red over her. We're going to emphasize some areas with some shadow work too, so. Let's see if we can actually... So stuff like this, where the, you get this kind of like, this is welded together, but we want to not see the seam line as much as possible. I'm gonna take a inflate brush. I'm just gonna lightly start inflating those thighs together. That way that seam isn't, isn't standing out as a, a bridge. It more looks like it's together now. Just a little bit of emphasis should do the trick. And we can even exaggerate that with some shadow work if we wanted to. Look up how paint was layered onto foam latex makeup appliances back in the day. If you want a revelation in paint layering to make the illusion of translucent skin. Oh my gosh, yeah. I'm sure Dick, Sm uh, Dick Smith would start a skin buildup in orange. Interesting, yeah. I know there's also like some spatter effects you can do. Oh yeah. Some of these guys are insane. I guess when you're when your job is to paint, yeah, definitely would be. Yep, that's because like I think skin has a little bit of yellow pigment. But what's interesting, I learned this in retouching. Yellow pigment, you want to stay away from yellow because it, then it looks like you have mono, and you don't want your character to look like they have mono. That just doesn't look good. <laughs> I have, yeah. I have tried it with the spatter and ZBrush. Um, it's pretty cool effect, but I feel like I definitely need high geometry in order to have it work out well. But I am still definitely learning how to better my painting within ZBrush uh, by taking the time and just going over each each spot. So if if you got a good uh, good reference, let me know. That's definitely one of the areas I know I can improve on a bit. But I like to get the skin tone down and then we'll try to do some shadows and stuff, but... You said Dick Smith, right? Let me look him up real quick. Good morning! Scenic, how you doing, buddy? I'm gonna type in painter after that sentence. Is this the guy you're talking about? Let's see if he has YouTube stuff on there. Oh, first you gotta learn how to spell. <laughs> Expense of the grandfather as effects makeup. Nice. Have you ever tried 3D Space Mouse before? The 2021.5 support it. And I was thinking if it's worth buying. I have not, no. I am. Okay, cool. I'm gonna look up this guy, dude. Thanks for that. Um, I have not too broke to have one but i would love to have one i hear it's a game changer um and from some of the professionals like the michael palfoviches and stuff of the world who do have them i hear that they enjoyed it but it took some time to get used to it but yeah i don't have any personal experience so i'm like you in that boat i would love to know inspired didn't you get a space mouse yeah, it looks awesome, and the benefits would make it easier to navigate. Exactly. And to be able to kind of look... I mean, the feeling of, like... <laughs> feeling of, like, flying a drone over your model seems really cool. Okay. Okay. 
I'm gonna switch this color. Let's actually, let's just try to apply an orange. You said orange was a good base layer. Let's actually get like a little bit of, see if that helps a little bit. I know I already put red on it, but let's build up the layers. Let's see what we got. I have a space mouse I use in SketchUp where it works great. It feels a little awkward to me in ZBrush. Interesting, Sloby. Oh, interesting. I haven't really, I haven't really heavily researched about the space mouse. What's the advantage of using one? Supposedly, the advantage of using a space mouse um, is that it's a little bit more seamless. You're able to do a lot, zoom in and rotate all with one hand instead of having to like hold a different, you know, without. Basically, like, you're able to zoom in and rotate simultaneously with one hand instead of having to hold a button on a keyboard to activate some of that feature. Um, stuff like that. But, you know, when it's a couple hundred dollars for something, I just don't know if it's going to work for my workflow. Um, yeah, it's, it's a little hard to want to spend that. did it's okay maybe if you got the expensive one with all the buttons or me it would be better but the joystick on its own isn't worth it interesting uh that makes perfect sense actually that makes that makes sense yeah okay let's actually go ahead and take the color spray and let's do Alpha 7. I airbrush some of this on there. I was thinking more in the struggle of getting used to navigating ZBrush for hours and switching to Maya Blender. Marmoset is totally different. The space mouse is universal, so it could solve the navigation problems. That's that's the idea of it, yeah. That is exactly the idea of it. And that's kind of why I want one, but for me it seems like an unnecessary purchase at the time because I don't navigate that often in other software. But it's intrigued me for sure. And the same shortcut for navigation works in other software, so you don't need to think about it. Yeah, the sh yeah exactly. Shift and B. Right button. Yep. Casey Love, Steve Wong, Tim Gore, all have Tira out there on painting. Okay, cool. Dick Smith is the granddaddy, but those are the guys. Perfect. Thanks, Verbal. I'm actually using Razor versus version 2. Interesting. How is that? Hey, unsolicited critique here. <laughs> Think your stern will climb masculus needs to head back to the base of her skull more. Don't I'm not really good with muscle names. I say this looks good. Oh, okay. Her throat muscle needs to head back to the base of her skull more. Sure, I'll take a look at it. I think you're correct, sir. Or ma'am. Sir, yep. Sir, ma'am. Or a person. Slubby, I think you're right. <laughs> yeah, we could definitely fix that. Let's actually do that. First, let me actually touch the surface that lets me do that. Thank you for the critique. I'll take it. There we go. Good catch. I love it. I use it both in clip paint and and ZBrush. Nice. All right, let's go ahead and actually let's actually use the clay here. 
Just use the clay build up a little bit to push that back. And let's use. Oh. There we go. Let's turn up the intensity a bit. Okay, we're going to use uh, Smooth Stronger, I think. There we go. Let's go ahead and dial that back. I'm a fella. Nice. Awesome. Yes, I'm streaming. Yeah. Go back to school, son. What are you doing? All right. Awesome. Let's actually take a look at that. Throat comes more straight across. Perfect. Yeah, dial that back just a bit. I mean, I haven't experienced any bugs in Synopsis 3. Nice, nice. Yes. Let's actually bring that chest forward just a little bit here. I think you're right, Carde. I'm so used to just saying dude all the time. It's a very 90s problem. So. Morning, Gamara! Let me actually, real quick. Tone that down a little bit. We'll smooth. Give that a little bit more of a jaw right there. Smooth that down. But thank you for the tip. Even I need help sometimes. Dude is just gender neutral. Yeah, that's 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 true. Yeah, you, you know what's funny is in the '90s there was a lot of like dude and dudette because there was a there was a I know like there's a lot of movie emphasis on it, but there was a point like I had said dude to some people because they were offended that I called them dude. Things change so fast, so I'm <laughs> so I'm just so used to saying dude all the time. I don't know if it's just a California thing, but. I try. You would rather prefer being called a dude than do that. All right, dude, that works. <laughs> good to know. Good to know. Yeah. Nah. Uh, all right, but I appreciate it, Sloopy. Thank you so much for the. Yeah. I. I I do appreciate it. You know, and that's just it's just good because everybody needs help sometimes. There we go. Yeah, our neck feels a little bit more natural now. Let's go ahead and save that change. Alright, stream radio time. Let's do that. Alright. Also, Sloby, I really appreciate how you put it out there, like, unsolicited. <laughs> like, I know you didn't ask, but I noticed something. I do appreciate that. I say guy all the time, even if I'm talking to a group of women, but it sounds weird saying you girls, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, it does sound weird. I feel, I feel weird asking 
like in, unless I'm I don't know because I can't see any of your faces I obviously have no idea and so it sometimes feels weird being like I don't know I feel awkward asking I don't know if 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 I'm saying it right so I usually refer to just just saying dude um but then sometimes I make that mistake where I just say here you go man and I'll say here you go man in a very like blanket like just general statement but then too I don't want to offend anybody so I'm just a paranoid person <laughs> I should actually start placing units yeah please do so I would totally love to have you place units in here I said golly yeah, yeah. <laughs> place them units all right we're going down because we're getting this guy here so let's do it Totally so missed the beginning of this conversation. I walked in on the dude talk and I live in California for a while. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I say dude and man all the time. And I really don't mean it in anything other than generic. The real question is, should you use someone's real name if you know it or use Twitch or Discord? I try to use Twitch or Discord name because I know some people in here personally. Um, so I try to use their, their, um, I try to use their, uh, their discord name because that's how the rest of the, the Twitch or discord name will see you. I feel like it's, it's a way to keep privacy. So I always use screen names. Yeah. Though I also have a nun, nun got mouse, and it's also given me problems with World of Warcraft keys. Mm -hmm. So it seems to be all over the bugginess. Oh, that's a bummer. How could anyone get offended for being called dude? I, I don't know, man. People are weird. <laughs> yeah. I use Twitch names unless they're specifically asking me to call them by the real name. Yeah, that's a good one, too. If somebody comes in and says... You know, hey, call me Ian instead of Iris Sculpts. You know, yeah, that's up to that person to make that. I generally just default to their screen name. Uh, just, yeah, that's that's my general go-to. Or dude. Or man. <laughs> Just people who aren't old like us get offended. <laughs> there we go. Kind of fix this neck up a little bit now. I'll make sure not to give her an Adam's apple because she doesn't have one. But now some of that some of that paint is looking a little weird, so let's go back to the paintbrush. And actually paint over that a bit. That's to not cause false shadows. There. I assume if any, or, or buddy, yeah, I say buddy a lot too. Uh, I got buddy from, I would say buddy from uh, aerospace, because so many people just said buddy. It was weird. I assume if somebody whose real name is attached to their profile, then it's fair game. That's fair. Yeah, I agree. My maiden name is very unique, so I've had this handle since uh, age 18. Yeah. Unless they've stated a preference. Yep, exactly. The way I understand the dude issue, dude used to be a gendered word. As was stated, dudette used to be the female form. However, language evolves and dude has evolved to be gender neutral. Yep. I call everyone and everything dude. Right on, dude. <laughs> you say mates, mates a lot? Yeah. And but that's um Can I ask, Christopher? You're are you in the UK or in like, are you uh, in Europe somewhere? Because that's a very European 
phrase as well. I've only heard mate being used uh, from my European friends. I've said it back to them because I'm used to hearing it, but I usually only use mate if I'm talking to somebody with uh, who uses it themselves. I say mate a lot as an American. Yeah, we say mate a lot. I'm in Norway. Okay, that makes sense. Interesting verbal. That makes sense. I've... That might... I don't know. Yeah, that's interesting. We don't hear that a lot in California, at least in my area of California. But California is also like, you know, California should be like three states minimum. <laughs> I'm using my real name here is actually my station profile too. Yeah, that makes sense, Michael. Yeah. Yeah, Northern Europe, Scandinavian. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. You picked it up about 10 years ago? Nice. <laughs> Yeah, that, that makes sense. Habits form, too. That's that's one of the that's one of the the quote perks of, you know, having so many different regions in America. You could travel around and you can get a lot of different experiences. Lived in Texas for over 10 years. I still can't say y'all without something weird. <laughs> yeah. One of my closest friends from uh, uh, Minnesota, and, and she'll say, don't you know a lot? <laughs> and uh, it's funny because uh, I think of Bobby's world when I hear, don't you know? <laughs> or, oh, yeah. I find yourself saying mate on occasion, but a good friend of mine is from Australia and says it a lot. That makes sense, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Your art station link is actually Kamara, though my name on there is my real name, so that's why Kamara's everywhere. Ooh, look at that. You played with that pretty well. All right, let's move on to warming up his body a little bit. And real quick, just to make sure that his, although it's kind of hidden. Oh no, his is actually back pretty far. Okay, that's, that actually looks pretty correct. Oh, it's covered a lot with hair, so. But that's pushed back a lot. Bobby! Bobby's worth. <laughs> I love Bobby's world. One of my favorite, favorite shows as a kid. Although super underrated at the time. Just too bad. Forgot that show. <laughs> also means people can search for me by, yeah, by your name or your screen name. Yep. That's why I took the time to try to capitalize on IR sculpts. I had it broken up a little bit too much in the beginning because IR sculpts is taken here on Twitch for some reason. Um, and so, uh, it was IR Sculptor for a while, but I thought it was similar enough. But now, if you type in IR Sculpts, I'm the guy who pops up, and that's kind of nice. But that took a little bit of time. All right, we're just going to kind of put a little bit of pink all over him. And then dial it back. So I don't want him to be too different of a color than her. Go. No other Emmy the Keeks that I'm aware of. No, you're one of the original. You are the only one. 
I've never seen an Emmy the Geek. While well, my other socials has changed to my Twitch handle. Nice. My real, yeah, ArtStation, sh I think, should be your real name because that's your professional portfolio. Um, I keep that one my real name. Although, I'm on here, so I, I didn't really, I wasn't ever trying to really hide my real name. It's pretty, it's pretty evident. Also, I incorporated IR as in the, that's my first name, first and last name. Thought that made sense. Dial that in a little bit. Now, I'm not trying to use Preview AO anymore because I don't want to give myself false illusion on depth. I'm going to actually want to go in there and, and hand paint the depth itself, so. I think actually that's it's pretty nice. Let's go back to her then because she looks a little splotchy. been known as Kamara for so long I was trying to figure out a way to make my professional identity somehow tied to it I think I found a good balance with the real name on the for on the profile and Kamara in the link I think so too yeah no I think that's a great way to do it that was my attempt as well when I was doing uh I right, so when I was coming up with this uh user handle um I was trying to figure out a good way to incorporate my real name into it, but also make it so that it could be tied to my career. So that's where that's where I decided to come up with it a bit. And yeah, I think it works. I think it's a, I think it's a good strategy. I think one thing as artists is that we want to be recognized by a real name as much as we want to be recognized by our screen name. It's a weird balance between, you know, our personal life and our career life. Because now I feel like as an artist, you need to be online. You need to be posting your stuff out there so people can find you, but you also want that sense of privacy. Or at least have a little bit. Nice placement for the claw marks. Wouldn't have to notice that area if not for the claw marks. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, what I did was I actually went through and studied where in the movie she gets clawed up. And it makes sense. At first, I questioned why it was only on one side of her body. But then it made sense because of where his claws are. Of course, it would be on that side. That's where he's swinging at her. Makes the most sense. But yeah, it took me a little... I was like... Is that on purpose? Yep. Yeah. Just lots of reference on it. My screen name is literally my first name and what exactly I do. Exactly. Yep. And I like that about you, Martin. I like that. Artist formal known. <laughs> That's Kamara when you get real famous, right? She's, she's headed up there, man. Real name is Slow Bay. Oh, or Slow. Is that how you say it? Slow Bay? Does the, the Y make it Bay, or is it still pronounced B, like how you have your your name or your screen name? Yeah, for sure. Though now I'm finding myself having to decide how to be credited on things. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's the tricky part, ain't it? I would rather be credited by my real name. I, I think I I fall under the Ian Robinson, a.k.a. IR Sculpts category. 
I would much rather have that than have people go IR scopes. You know, like, I, and I'm okay with that because you know, I, and I don't know if that's also too partly how I grew up because um, you know artists, you know, especially um, we, we'd sign everything. We just sign everything around the real name. Growing up in the '90s was really interesting looking at it more in depth because we didn't have the internet the way we have it now so it wasn't as as well known to have a screen name and a real name we just sign everything with our real name so it's interesting taking a uh, a closer look at it and thinking like oh yeah it's just it's different slow b is how it's pronounced okay perfect yeah hello ninar Talking about names, you came in at a good time. And so many bad AOL instant messenger PlayStation usernames, so I decided to keep it simple. You, you guys want to know what my? Some of you do, but check this out. This is my first. This was my, and you can Google this. So we're just gonna go to standard Google. Let me check this out. My first username was terrible. This was my first username. K-A-Y-I-N-U-S. K -A -Y -I -N -U -S. And I did a lot of stuff way back. You could still search it to this day. It's crazy to think about. <laughs> Big J Customs! Figure's looking pretty good, I think. Yeah, it's coming along. We're painting today. Who wasn't terrible? <laughs> exactly, exactly. That gamer face, though. Yeah, that gamer face. Look at this. Took this in my living room. <laughs> I still use this photo from time to time. It's with a PlayStation 3 controller and um, Astro headsets. Yeah. Um, you can type in this and you can find a lot of weird shit that I used to do. I used to be a part of a, a channel called Uniting Force. I think I told you guys that story. I used to live stream, do video games. Um, really weird, dude. Wow, I didn't even think that was you. Yeah. Hashtag sponsor. <laughs> so, yeah. That's why I said I, I've had plenty of experience with um, with YouTube and Twitch and stuff like that. But it was learning. I made a lot of mistakes as equally as, um, as I had some successes. So, you know. You win some, you lose some, as they say. You left it on the screen server on my laptop, scared the shit at me. Yep. <laughs> you got some Vegeta here in that picture. I did, yeah. I kept it spiky for a while. Actually, um, I used to never know what to do with my hair. And then one day I was watching Scrubs way back. And there's an episode where Ryan Reynolds is in the is in it. I think it's an early season. Anyway, and he's they're going flashing back to how JD got his hair up, and it was the whole like just go straight up, buddy. <laughs> and I pulled from that. I was like, hey, you know what? Actually, I'll try that. I've never tried that hairstyle before. Um, so I did, and it worked out pretty well for a while. Typically, it's my go-to hairstyle now, um, but. Because I've avoided uh, hair salons for the last year and a half, um, we now got now got a man bun. <laughs> I've been Kamara for 15 years, and I've always been a little weird about my real name. Probably at least particularly because working retail means people use my name after reading it off of my name tag, and it made me so incredibly uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I understand that 100%. I don't know if it's still up, but searching F Big J may find some cringy StarCraft gameplay and casting from a decade ago. You you probably could. Google remembers everything. I didn't realize that KNS would be um would be searchable until after Google bought YouTube. A lot of things became searchable. Um although I find that funny because I've had the name KNS as a as a screen name since AOL. Um, because when I was in high school, um, me and a buddy of mine, we used to, uh, record our videos and do stuff like, you know, record a uh, gameplay on our VCR and, um, 
we'd post stuff in GameFAQ when GameFAQ was first out. And it was really cool because um, we would use those handles all the time for, uh, for dropping our walkthroughs. And it was actually pretty neat. So I've just had that handle since I was like 16. So I'll never give it up. Um, there's actually a YouTube channel that's still around. It's not active, but it's definitely around that has that name. And you can find the weirdest shit on there. <laughs> Game facts for the win. Yep, exactly. Yep, I've written my fair share of stuff on there. I've contributed. Okay. Let's get in here a little bit. Now we're going to take the damn standard now. And we're going to actually get a kind of purpley red. We're going to go deep on these cuts. Because they look a little... Not so good. And we're actually going to subtract as well. We're going to actually cut in at the same time. So let's turn up Lazy Mouse. And I want this, I want this like dark. That might be a little too dark. Your hair is too long now to stick straight up. Yeah, exactly. I'd have to, sh I'd have to cut it. Although with enough gel, you could very easily do a few things. Okay, we're going to go kind of deep with some of these. There we go. There we go. So that right there is just going to kind of clean that up. But we're also cutting that in. So hopefully that will make painting, if this ever gets really painted, a lot easier. But the deeper the cut, the more bruise it's going to get. So we got to gotta factor that in too. Really just gash that open. Now I do hairspray and a vacuum cleaner. Exactly, yeah. I've had really long uh, Liberty Spikes before. Usually for like a Halloween thing, but I've done it. And there's a lot you can do. But normally with the normal hair gel, hair gel it would be a lot harder. We can go 1970s and get like eggs and stuff and put it in there. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> Safukoi, thank you so much for the follow. Two months not showering and you don't need shit. <laughs> Ew, that's disgusting, dude. <laughs> that's gross, my friend. <laughs> Hilariously gross, but nonetheless. <laughs> there we go. There. There we go. Let's get those sound effects in there. There we go. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. Now, what I want to do is actually, not because it's part of the show or anything, but what I do want to do is actually add some sharper scratches on her face. So I think it'll just bring some of that to life. As you know, she did get punched in the face a little <laughs> bit. Oh, death isn't here. Maybe I can't annoy him. <laughs> See here. Now can I? Yeah, exactly. No, death is sleepy sleep. How do scratches on the face be smaller than the uh, on the other parts? Um. Well, these scratches, these big ones, are actually from his claws. Um. But I don't know. He also has nails. So, these could be nail scratches. Like when he grabs her face in one spot, like that scratch. Yeah. So, you know. Plus, I don't want to ruin her face that much. <laughs> now, he doesn't have any scratches on his body, per se. But he has... His face is fucked up. So, I definitely want to uh, add some discoloration and bruising. Even though we may not see a lot of it. Um, we, we could see a good chunk in the render. So, yeah. I see... So, 
Also, just a little bit of a stylized choice, you know. I think now we're gonna take a like a like a darker kind of skin tone, not brown, something like this, and actually go over some of this muscle stuff. So let's hit the damn standard for this. We're just gonna deal with color alone, out of a big soft brush. Really drop that color down. I just want to come through and lightly highlight some of these muscles. That might just have a little bit of catch to them. A little bit of our own little shadow work. The reason why I like the damn standards is because I can hit a pretty straight line no matter how soft the brush is. So I can come in and just lightly add some of that definition and emphasize it a bit more. Hey, I need to sleep now. I'm amused that I am with you, Ma. It's just that time of me. Yeah, hey, it's going. It's going, bro. How are you doing? We're just painting today. This project is pretty much finished, in my opinion. Um, there's only like one little critique I got from Slow B, and I appreciate it too, by the way. Seriously, actually, that made me have. I'm really glad you said something, because I clearly missed it. Um, but outside of that, I think this project is wrapping up. Getting ready to do a render. So if I could paint this and render this today, that would be great. Um... I think we can do that. <laughs> oh no, it was uh, it was intended, cause uh, death kept timing her, <laughs> and it was like, come on. <laughs> so I said, you know what? When you get tired of it, time him out. But you have to learn how to use it, though. <laughs> I'm expecting a timeout battle, and then Martin will just sit there and, and and time them both out when he gets enough. Because clearly he's also faster at it than, than Death is. Uh, mods can time out mods. You can't do anything to me. I'm untouchable in my own <laughs> in my own channel. But yeah, you can, you can do a timeout. That's how he was still able to time you out. Yeah. Do you happen to have a time lapse video of Gwynnum Spider Sculpt Session? I don't know, but it is. Oh man, actually. No. I don't think I was YouTube streaming at that time either. Unfortunately, no. That was a while ago, too. I think I did that project like. Four months ago? Five months ago? I'm in love with that sculpt. Thank you so much. I'm glad you do. I loved it too. Um, that was definitely one of the projects. That's funny. It was it was inspired by um, a concept art by... Was it Randy Bishop? No, it wasn't Randy Bishop. It was another concept artist I'm blanking on. Anyway, um, I'll, I'll, I'll try to remember it. But um, long story short... Um, it was inspired, but then also to uh, um, my buddy Rush had made a statement <laughs> one day saying, you don't do any uh, sexy, sexy girls. And I was like, not yet. <laughs> so I decided to take it to another level and thought, why not? And that's what that's what we landed on. And it, it seemed that a lot of people really liked what we landed on. <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend I stream with a lot and made him a mod. He's never been a mod before and immediately turned on sub only chat mistake. <laughs> yeah, Rush does have that uh Rush does have that uh market cornered and that's good too because you know 
like I told him one time, I said, even if I did decide to do like a waifu or a sexy female character, um, it would be completely different. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be the thing I always do. So it'd be just like, oh, I did it one time. Just take it in a different direction. Hey, what happened to my color here? I need to go lightly, slightly brown again. There we go. You don't ever really want to use black on skin tone to shadow it. It looks wrong. You want to pick a warmer, darker tone, like a brown or something. It'll help emphasize a bit better. You nailed it. Nice, thanks. Yeah. Luckily, I've been a mod in other channels. Nice, nice. I just thought it'd be funny. <laughs> also, too, you've just really just been here and supported, and now you get to time out death, so. So, yay. Alright, now I'm noticing some, some other anatomy issues. Just by uh, coming in and shadowing, you can see some of your stuff. That's also why I like poly painting because you get to come in and actually take a look and see if there's any mistakes that stand out. And sometimes we put things in place and then don't finish it. So here, for example, this muscle, this muscle almost 90 degree arcs and I had it a little different. So it's also why I say like, take your time with stuff. And you know, if it takes like you know, if you think you're finished, maybe sit on it for a couple hours or up to a day. Come back and take a look. You might find something. All right. Battle's ready already? Oh, my goodness. All right. I know that kind of gets covered. Maybe that's why I skipped over it, but we're going to be able to peek inside, so... I want to be able to make sure that that's, that's pretty solid. Battle time! Yeah! Bloop. Let's hope we do it! Here we go, here we go. Stretchy stretch! Kill that enemy, get him! All right. Nice, nice. Hey, thank you, Ace Smash FX. Thank you so much for the follow. Kamara, there you go. Boom. All right. Let's move it on down. Let's move it on over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's put a Templar down. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, let's get that damn sander brush back up. Add a little bit more shadow work everywhere. This will also emphasis or emphasize uh, some of her uh, her strong points. With these nice muscles. Yay! Good morning, Death. Good morning, Death. <laughs> All right. Ooh, that's that's a big cut. We don't want that much. There we go. There we go. Now let's go ahead and just soften that color a little bit. It's a little much. There we go. like some 80s buff dude stuff faking AO yep faking it faking it till we make it I 
know what we're gonna do? We're actually gonna go ahead and lower the subdivision on this really pretty hand. And we're gonna go ahead and Maybe push this in just a little bit more. It's a little too round for my liking, so we're gonna go ahead and kind of bring that more to a slight point. Looking awesome. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah. Big work in progress. So three weeks, guys. We've been working on this for three weeks. So, you know, if there's anybody out there who just is wondering how long things can take. Now, and I've even done some stuff off stream. Not a whole lot. I kept most of it on stream. Um, and we've been doing this for three weeks. So. Yeah, these projects can definitely take time. And that's what I love about them. Emphasize a little bit of those of those lats for her, but we don't want to emphasize. We really don't want to do anything with um, the uh, the rib muscles. I again, I'm bad with that stuff. I don't want to emphasize that. I want that to be a little smooth. So they'll give us a little bit of a softness approach, but still giving us the definition that we require. I somehow started getting into Twitch the day you started this project. It's been really cool to watch the progress. Thank you, thank you. But three weeks isn't that long, considered you sculpted two characters. Hey, that's true. Yeah, I guess that is true, yeah. Yep, and I think that's just a, a bit of time and... Uh, I think that's just a bit of time and experience on how to approach it. We also built an anime base mesh head uh, in that time period. Actually, we built a couple of them, which is pretty cool. I was actually excited about that. Yeah. That's right, Kamara. That you, you just started, huh? For some reason, I got the impression that you've been streaming a lot longer. I didn't realize you just started there. Have you streamed at, on other channels before? Let's emphasize her her uh, shin bones a little bit. There we go. Smooth down that area. It's a little rough. Three weeks, I think I did a donut. <laughs> I've been there, man. I've been there. Uh, nope, I've streamed a game with a friend in the past, but like maybe three times in two years. So I'm basically brand new to streaming. Well, honestly, you're a natural at it. I like watching your streams. I'll lurk in your streams and just see your progress and hear you talking to yourself like any good streamer will do or artist in general. So, uh, yeah, I think you're doing great. It was funny. I think I, when I started streaming, I think I'd get a viewer or two. Um, now I've grown a lot as an artist since then. Um, but I would talk to myself a lot <laughs> and then Martin showed up. And then it was just always nice to have somebody to talk to. I was like, yeah, you get to have a guy to talk to. It was so cool. <laughs> uh, what's wrong with people in this good morning crap? It's because we kill you with kindness, brother. We kill you with kindness. Something that a lot of people don't try. We're really saying 
shut the fuck up and enjoy yourself. <laughs> Uh, sorry, can I help myself? <laughs> All right, now let's go back to Vega. Obviously, what we're doing is we're sticking with uh, with body tones and stuff first. I'm not trying to detail all the clothing at the same time. We're just doing the bodies first. It's easier for me that way. Plus, I keep uh, similar colors together. And what's cool is we can go a little darker and a little uh, harder with him because he is a buff dude and we can handle it. So we can actually really hit darker AO where we need it. And it'll still look pretty good. Should be oh god, it's much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely a lot more fun with someone to talk to. I honestly can't believe I already have a few regulars. It's been so cool. No, it is cool. No, and your work is great, Kamara. So you know, there's, you're you're personable. Your work is great, and it's just you make it fun, and that's that's all I've ever wanted to do is just have fun and hang out, get to do what I love. See, unlike you, I had other things to do this morning, like sleep and sleep and sleep. And, 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 and oh, I'm sorry, I misread that. Oh, I backlogged all of my ch <laughs> <laughs> A couple of those regulars aren't artists. I found, I found me natural through, oh, nice. They're not artists themselves, they're just people who like to hang out. That's really cool. I like that too. Yeah, I follow a f I, f I follow a few non-artists as well. Um, actually, one I mean, you guys know uh, uh, Dark Dark Stone Digital. Um, I really like. He's a game developer, um, and I really like his streams. He makes it fun. So not necessarily artist-driven, but he's still creating, and it's cool. Yep. Yeah, Kamara's great. Follow her, guys. Yeah, she's awesome. And she streams after I stream, too, so it's really cool. We could just raid each... Okay, I could just raid her every time. <laughs> Already saw you guys talking about me. Yeah, of course we're talking about you. Don't worry. We didn't say anything we wouldn't say to your face, brother. <laughs> I'd gladly tell you. <laughs> yeah. Because I love you. Yeah, Darkstone's current project is really cool. It really is, yeah. Yep. Yeah, his stuff is cool. But him and I are on similar similar schedules, and we learned that because we raided each other a few times just to be like, so I'm leaving? <laughs> Sorry? Next time, which is sometimes that's pretty cool. All right, just kind of make sure we're keeping it. Yeah, it's looking good. That's looking good. Yeah, absolutely correct. I'm gonna check that out. Darkstone, yeah, check him out. He's a really cool guy. Yeah. He does some really cool, like, horror projects. I think the one he's working on currently has to do with a, uh, like, a, like a CSI, but, like, you're in a morgue, like, you're a doctor, but you're trying to figure out some weird stuff that happens. Like, yeah, he's, it's pretty cool. And he puts his stuff up on Steam as well, so you see him make the game, and then you can actually go and, and, uh, download them for a few bucks which is neat too it's a great way to support go 
All right, so see here where like we have some of this brick and uh, stuff. So these bricks would be attached to uh, to him, the ones that are on his body. So what we're gonna need to do is actually kind of squish, squish in his area a bit, make it look like it's pressing against. So we can take just the uh, damn standard, kind of trace along where that's going to get cut. Might even add some cracks and stuff in there. A little bit lower. Something like that. Yeah. Perfect. Going outside to poison myself. Have fun. All right. I'm going to trim that down a little bit. All right. Okay, what I'm thinking about what I'm thinking about right now is actually um, I may want to pull this brick out a little bit more right here. So grab this brick and actually kind of maybe taper that down a little bit. Maybe having that hang more right there but pressed in there just a bit so that way it's still attached to the wall. And then we'll um, have these three bricks here attached to him when he's printed. Yeah, so that'll be attached to him and that will that will uh, look a little bit different. And then what we'll do here is we'll trim on this side. We'll grab the standard brush and on his body will actually add a little bit of a squish right here so it looks like it's pressed up against same with this side same with that there we go you say brick i hear negan saying rick <laughs> yeah brick no i say brick 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 And then let's actually, here, let's add some, let's add some cracks to, to the bricks. Let's actually go pretty nuts. There we go. Let's actually add some dark paint to that as well. going to emphasize where there's going to be holes already. Let's make sure the surface, I had a surface detail on there. It is applied. Okay, great. Are you going to slice them up today? Uh, I want to get the render done today um, and hopefully start the slicing, but the slicing is going to take a while. So we'll, the goal is to get it sliced completely by Friday. And then this will be going up for, um, I'll be putting it on my Patreon once it's printed and tested. So if you want to print one yourself, you will be able to. Go. Uh, I kind of don't like those. This is where you can either try to draw it out yourself or you can use a, a brush for this. This is where I would use a brush. I'm trying to cut it myself, but I don't really like the direction I've taken it. So let's, I have a few XMD brushes that I really love to use. And we're going to go ahead and use those. Let's make sure we save first.
Okay. And then we just type in cracks. Okay, cool. So I have a few cracks and stuff that we could definitely use. Yeah, that's fine. I want them to look good, and so why not? Also, too interesting. I'm gonna subdivide, um, which is gonna be a lot, but that's because the information is not registering as clean as I want. Okay, perfect. Let's go ahead and pick a couple different ones. Let's pick this this one right here. I want some of these. I want there to be like pressure cracks. Yeah. What I like about these is even though that's doing a lot of work, it, you still need a good amount of placement or a ref or idea placement. So it's nice sometimes to just work with a good brush and focus on where you want them instead of every little nook and cranny. Plus, these are going to be really small, so I almost don't need to sit here and dwell on every single nook and cranny of detail. About the jagged polygons on his hairs, are you going to see that in printing or normals will auto smooth? Oh, um, these are still projecting subdivision. They're not at their highest. I'm going to smooth that out before I get there. Yeah. Um, depending on how big they are, like for example, single strand of hair, uh, this might be a lot. But see, it's only dynamic subdivision right now. Once I hit apply and then subdivide a couple times, that's going to go away. They're just really low poly right now. And once I do that, they smooth out. So I try to keep everything as low as possible until I'm ready to start merging. So, yeah. But to be honest with you, um, we don't have to take his hairs very high. Because if we measure right now... The biggest hair strand is five millimeters, so that's really small. So a lot of this detail that's jaggedness would actually go away. You might see it ever so slightly, but yeah, once we smooth, yeah, we'll end up applying smoothing and then that'll, that'll go away. That's the that's the issue with 3D printing as a whole is that um, there's it's still hard to keep a lot of good detail. Um, so you want to, yeah, you kind of want to make sure you, you, uh, kind of get how you, you figure out how much uh, detail you'll end up losing in the print. And then you kind of work within those parameters. So a lot of times it's, it's not worth putting in all that time and, and energy into detailing because it's just, it's just going to go away. But that's a great, that's a great question. go go all right lurk away you'll be missed still mind blown on medic human yes i am too that martin that's crazy buddy i know it, it's insane just to think about the level of detail that these uh that everything's going Cool. I'm gonna emphasize some single cracks. Okay. 
go. Okay. Let's go ahead and let's actually look up maybe one or two more varied variations. Something like that. Go. Oh, we don't want that one like that because that's going to look like it's uh, joined together. Let's actually really bring that up, sew that out. What scale will these be printed at? Um, the total scale size will be about a foot. Um, I didn't factor in the scale of uh, of, the, of each character. Um, I just sized it to about a foot. Um, it's a good question. We could figure we could figure it out. But I didn't have a set scale in mind. Sometimes with my personal projects, I just sculpt it and then I size it to a size that I want. Let's see. Let's see what Chung Li's height is. So Chung Li is on average by 5'8. But yeah, now I'm curious. So 5'8, let's go ahead and measure here, here, which is Fro's top of the head to her hip is about 71 millimeters. Hold on one second. We'll see what we'll figure out what scale I made it 71 and then from her hip to her toes is 128 so plus 120 sorry 121 92 millimeter scale let's see here inch to millimeter now I'm figuring out all that math stuff Okay, well, so then 134 times 8, let's figure out a real height. 4 times 5, which you at 15, okay, and then 8, plus 203, oh, cool, and then let's divide that by what did I say? 117.23, hold on. Two. Okay. So 172 divided by. It's about one fifth scale. No, one sixth scale. Around one six. <laughs> about there, yeah. Roughly, roughly factored about. It's going to be a big print. That's what I'm excited about. But yeah, I don't usually... Actually, though, I will tell you, um, Vegeta is one... The Articulate Vegeta is one six scale, hair included. That one I figured out just because it's going to be a portfolio piece for... Um, for the... Uh, for my articulated uh, articulation. But yeah, so this this is about one one sixth as well. Give or take. That's assuming her size is accurate. <laughs> to this, to her, I didn't I didn't factor that. I usually don't for personal projects, but I think I should start doing that just to to have a better answer. I feel like I failed right there. Eater is off, but it is hot in this house today. There we go. We're going to go ahead. They had a weird little bump right there. So we're going to go ahead and smooth that down. 
And then we're gonna add a little bit of brick skin squish right here. Is that cutting? No, it's not, it's just... There we go. There, that should be fine. I think I want to add some big, uh, some big cracks too. There we go. Yeah, something like that. When we paint those, those will look nice. Did you guys see that uh, MetaHuman trailer that Martin was talking about? That's that shit's insane. The biggest limitations of these auto generated softwares like MetaHuman is the flexibility is often missing and you are fixed by pre-made parts by Epic. I bet I also bet after a couple of games you're going to notice the repeating parts like repeating hair, repeating eyes in different games. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I, I agree. But you gotta start somewhere, I guess. And that's that's a good chunk of it. It isn't it is very interesting to to see where it's all where it's all at, you know. And also too, technology like that gets um what's the word? It gets limited by the um it gets limited by the consumer ready um, hardware. So while there's a lot of really nice hardware, um, you know, those games are only going to be truly appreciated by those who can afford to run it. Because I bet you that runs really heavily graphically in intense. You probably need a 3090 card to run that. No, it won't take anybody's job. I don't think that's ever a fear. Oh, Stream Raiders. But it is crazy to see just where the technology is, has come from and where it's gone. So. I'm excited to see what they, what they end up doing with it. There we go. Kind of push that there. One second, I'm gonna finish this quick thought. There we go. Okay. Actually, let's save it under a different one now. 19. All right, let's go ahead and hit Stream Raiders up. All right, all right. Ooh, we got 40 people, 40 allies. I mean, I like it. Yeah, I don't think machines are ever really going to take anybody's job. I think I think um, it's just going to make people's jobs easier and maybe require people to wear more hats because they'll be like, well, you can we can get this set up and do this. Um, so take this on since this has become a little bit easier for you, but to build that takes time and yeah I don't see it taking anybody's job either, but I think we'll just find it where It'll just make things a little easier and a little bit more difficult All right, we did it. We got J crew and Cardi Earning that gold all right all right, here we go. That gold chest, every loyalty chest, everybody was craving. Let's do it. Let's 
do it. Almost got this guy at 20. I've been trying real hard to get him to 20. It's gonna take some jobs. <laughs> Maybe. You never know. All right. Look at this beautiful face. Look at it. It's so, so. <sighs> All right, let's go ahead and get a base color going on here. Get some of that red happening. Rotoscoping will go away. Yeah, I'm sure there will be technologies that uh, get faded out. I don't know. We'll see. It's hard to say. There's a lot of trends that happen in games, too. That, uh... A lot of trends that happen in movies and games. That come and go. They don't know normally land. Technology's great, but it's too early. Or not everybody has the technology uh, readily available. Or you can't get graphics cards in certain parts of the world anymore. You know, all that stuff plays a factor. That's low-hanging fruit. Some AIs are already pretty good at cutting mates <laughs> for arbitrary objects. Yeah. But, you know, there's something to be said about the human touch, you know. There's a lot of things that you can, you can have AIs do, but AI still has a very hard time, in my opinion, um, creating the human element that makes it what it is. You know, like you look at something like metahuman and you can just tell it's not human, but you, you're you confused why you feel that way. Um, there's just something about it that's too robotic and too blah. And so while you can create AI and you can create programs to do things for you to make it seamless, seamless you still have to build those things. And if there's not a person building it, then unless you're setting up a Skynet essentially to then build things for you, uh, but even then, somebody has to control it. There has to be a process that gets controlled. Like, Facebook created an AI a couple years back that supposedly was tested on its own server, and it started hacking its way out of its main server and trying to branch into others that they ended up shutting it down. It's a... There's too much... There's too much... Um, scratch that. There's not enough controls. It's It's so far out of our control reach right now that it's just not going to i don't think it's going to replace anything anytime soon i think down the line eventually it'll get to that point where it does end up replacing certain simple tasks but if used correctly i think it's still not going to remove that human element i think it's still too new of technology for us to understand enough of what it is we've built but that's not to say that somebody won't try either you know but that's that's my understanding and and uh opinion on it um but you know i mean look at how long it took to develop the microprocessor chip not long at all yeah and it let's see chris says yeah and it tried a to develop a communication with a different ai yeah that they only understood yep they created their own language that's why i heard too People will still have to pull the levers, but certain jobs will be in less demand. Yeah, I think that's what it'll come down to. It'll be less demand. I don't necessarily, yeah, like I said, I don't think it'll necessarily take it away, but I think it'll make tasks easier, requiring people to multitask. So like, for example, let's say somebody finally does create a one touch button that retopos um, and gets everything good, but that's dependent on the sculpt. So everything has to be set in a position where you click the button and then boom, it's retopoed. I think we'll get there. We're well on our way with, you know, what Blender's doing and what Z, uh, ZBrush has done with ZRemesher. Until then, you know, we still have to manually retopo. But if it got to that point, then a character artist, without a doubt, would be like, you have to retopo. Like, you just have to. Like, you get to hit that button because then you'll know if it's screwed up and you'll have to fix the sculpt to make sure that that button clicks it and gets it good. I think we'll get there. But in the meantime, there's still going to be that element of like, you should really manually retopo or maybe manually fix some things. But 
I don't know, I think that's like the example I come on to, where it will eventually knock down the need for retoppoing or having a guy do that. Uh, which has already been the case from what I understand. There's a lot of people who want character artists to retoppo, so. Just thoughts and vibes. <laughs> Maybe in 200 years if we're not already on other planets. Or we, yeah, or we kill ourselves trying to get to said planets. Everyone thought Skynet would be made from a military, but the truth is it'll arise from social media and people who don't like to retop. <laughs> right? There you go. That's pretty accurate. <laughs> I think that's pretty on point. Do you think that Deepfake will replace uh, digital CGI humans? Um, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know enough about digital CGI humans other than... You know, the best ones are usually coming from a scan of the actual said human. So I, so I don't know. Uh, there's there's clearly a lot of talented deepfake artists out there who make things look better than they are. Um, I think I think it just all depends on the artist and the time and money. I think there's a lot at play. You know, a lot of people uh, attacked. Uh, okay. Has everybody here seen Mandalorian, or do you guys care about spoilers? I don't want to say anything if somebody's still, like, trying to, to get up on that. But it, it is tied to the deep fake. As I went down a rabbit hole not too long ago. You get you guys are caught up, or at least you don't mind the conversation. <laughs> Okay. Well, um, so what I will say, if you don't mind? Okay. All right. As long as people don't mind. I'll also, too, real quick, I'm just going to kind of push this set up so much. I'm not caught up, but I'll mute you for a few minutes. Okay. Okay. Let me know. Type when you're muted. Maybe she didn't hear me. Type when you are muted. It'll be it'll be brief. Okay, cool. Okay, so basically with a deep fake, um, what they did with Luke Skywalker, um, the they the Disney had come out and said that um, they tried their best to hide what they were trying to achieve with the Mandalorian with bringing Luke back. Um, where other deepfake artists did a really good job, but they spent a lot longer trying to achieve the realistic look of Mark Hamill. So I think too there is some there's some uh, relevance to what what we are going to be able to do with deepfake and where the studios want to take it. But there's so much emphasis on hiding things from fans who are like diehard who want to know that things like what happened with Mandalorian ends up happening where it doesn't quite look like it, but it's because they're trying to, it's, they're trying to also cover, cover their tracks and not get, uh, you know, not spoil so much, so to speak. So I think that has a lot to do with it, but I think deep fake when it's done right, as we could see as clear examples on YouTube, I think deep fake can bring a lot to the table if it's done right. Yeah, they're trying to be coy, exactly. Yeah. So, so I, I don't know. I, I uh, from what I understand with 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 digital CGI humans and deepfake, I think a lot can be done there. It's just whether or not the studios want to put in the time and the effort to do it. I think that's that's always going to be the driving force for a lot of people. Um, now, whether or not our government uses it, that's that's a different conversation. <laughs> Does that make sense? That's that's kind of my thoughts on it, uh, but definitely nowhere near the understanding level of that stuff. That stuff still trips me out. But I'm curious on what you guys think about it before we bring back Kamara. Okay. 
I think we're going to go ahead and apply that subdivision. And actually start adding this. Apply. There we go. Yeah, okay. And here's a lot smooth a lot smoother now. There's a lot going on. This is a Okay. We're gonna bring Kamara back. I have the same opinion like you. Nothing much to say about that from that side. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But I think technology is going to be really cool to, to where 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 it will go and what we'll see. You know, there's always going to be a middle ground. I think we see a lot more. I think we see a lot more of ideals than actualities when it comes to technology, you know? I think that's, I think the reality falls somewhere in the middle of like, this would be really cool. Like for example, I saw this really intense video. Um, oh, we were talking about Mandalorian and we didn't want to, she didn't want to have anything spoiled, but we were talking about deep fake. So, um, so she said she didn't mute herself, so she didn't, so we didn't spoil anything for her. That's all. But um, I saw this crazy video of this idea where they were trying to fix um, really bad. Um, I forget the proper technical name, but when your spine gets contorted and twisted. And so they had this idea, I saw this video where they would cut open and then put these pins in and then the pins would basically be attached to essentially torque wrenches that then twist and realign the spinal cord. Now, it was cringing watching that and the human body is amazing, but I think this technology that we saw... It was an idea more so than reality. I don't know if we'll ever get there because what can the human body withstand? How much, how much quote, pain and suffering does that person endure when that procedure happens or if that procedure would happen? So I think like while we, I think with our, with technology at our fingertips, we see a lot more possibilities rather than what's actually reality. And I think that's where it gets interesting to kind of see where you know, 3D models and 3D games and stuff like that will go because I feel like people really, really try to push, but then they'll have to dial it back to make it actually happen. They will first have to solve the phantom limb pain. Oh my gosh, yes. Phantom pain is crazy. Oh, that's a crazy thing. Yep. So that's my thoughts. <laughs> those those be my thoughts and ideals. I love stuff like that too, by the way. I like discussing that stuff, especially since, you know, there's really no right or wrong answer. We're just going to have to wait and see what happens, um, which I, I love and cherish, you know. I mean, look, I, as a photo retoucher, I watched apps come out that literally could take my job away. Um, except for they're only bound by the, the algorithm that they were built on. So I thought, man, I'm gonna lose my job photo retouching and graphic designing because you have an app that can create a logo and fix your face in five minutes. But it didn't because while that's cool, um, it's not quote professional so professionals won't take it. <laughs> Stuff like that happens too a lot. How do you set up the transpose tool to measure in millimeters? Oh, great question, by the way. Uh, let, hold on one second, I wanna make sure. Why does the human body sense a part? Wait, why does the human body sense a body part that is no longer attached to the nervous system? Oh yeah, uh, I am, ooh, you, you getting into some crazy, crazy uh, physics and logic. I have no idea. 
I assume that the body knows something's supposed to be there and it's sending signals that it's supposed to be there, but nothing's happening because it's not. Um, so to do that, Christopher, what you do is you have to set your scene scale to first. So bring in a sub tool that is, you know, easily identifiable. I like to use a cube. And when you have your cube like this, you just come up to Z plugin and go to scale master, set scene scale and select the millimeter option. And right up here at the top, you'll actually see, instead of it saying units, it switches to millimeters. Although a little hidden gem is that the it's always technically measuring in millimeters, even though it says units, because ZBrush's default measurement system is millimeters. Um, and you can even go as far as coming down to the transpose tool uh, transpose unit and preference and you can set you can mess with this if you want I, I wouldn't unless you knew what you were doing but yeah just go to Z plugin hit set scene scale and then now when you use your transpose tool it'll actually it'll use uh, millimeters instead of units and it gives you a more accurate reading I have returned! As soon as I muted you, my ADHD kicked in and I left my desk. <laughs> Fair enough. Bad signals to the, by the brain? Yeah, like somehow corrupted. Yeah, exactly. I suspect the brain has a mapping of where signals have come from previously and has responses to those signals. That makes the most sense verbal. I like that. Yeah, of course, you're welcome. Maybe it's bodily condition in, conditions triggering the responses without the presence of the original stimulus. Hmm, you're getting fancy. I like that. That's probably it. Yeah, that makes more sense. That makes the most sense to me. But that is probably cost prohibitive and very dangerous. Oh, yeah. Maybe brain surgery could cauter oh, cauterize the nerves to the brain. May I don't know. I don't know if it's that simple. Yeah. I would imagine that the the way the brain is wired and how the nerves are, I don't think the brain will ever shut down sending those signals without damaging something to the brain. That's part of like the whole like the you know the uh, what should I call it? We only understand like a certain amount of what our brain is actually capable of. That sort of stuff. Like yeah, I think a lot of that is. Still a, a little unknown. All right, let's go ahead and take the damn standard. Let's get a darker color now. Yeah, first they have to figure out how to not let infection set in. Having a material that goes outside the skin and going into the body is horrible. It's the main problem. Yeah, it, yep. You need a firewall. <laughs> <laughs> bad UV mapping. <laughs> it's bad UV mapping for sure. Well, at the end of the day, too, it, it comes. It, I think it comes a lot. Comes down to a lot of resources, and yeah, we we still have a lot of way to go. just so much that even like with the with the pandemic watching watching uh, the medical responses and trying to figure out you know there's so much that even they still say we don't know we don't know how the body would respond to this that or the other you know science is still like they say science is still a baby almost like there's still so much unknown at, at work that they're still trying to kind of catch up with reality and so following, you know, medical journals and, and stuff on COVID, it's been really interesting, just even slightly at the smallest percent level of basic understanding. And it, it just trips me out how much they always say they don't know. You know, a lot of it's guessing. And in a way, I don't know, I think that's kind of cool. It just means how complex we all are.
And in chat, I gotta go to dinner. Always, as always, it's been a pleasure. See you soon. All right, buddy. Take it easy, I.O. Matthew. No problem, man. Always, always a pleasure to have you here. Enjoy your dinner. Eat a good amount of food. getting hungry thinking about what he might be eating. <laughs> what is he going? Yep. So it's not only nerve problems, it's also psychological. There are experiments where a fake hand's left is placed in their real hand right, while their actual left hand is hidden from view behind the behind a blind. They take brushes and strokes over the fake hand and real hand at the same time. After a bit, they smash the fake hand with a hammer and the people feel it. Sorry for the wall text. No, that's fine. That's crazy. It. <laughs> you guys ever watch 127 hours? Yeah, that's insane. When I first watched 127 hours, uh, it's old enough, so slight spoilers if you haven't seen it. But you know, it's about the guy who goes off hiking by himself, and he gets tr he gets his hand stuck with a rock. First time I watched that movie. When he cuts off his own arm, my hand went numb watching it happen. It was weird. It was such a weird experience. But I'm sitting there like, oh my gosh, what is happening with my hand? <laughs> so yeah, I, that's, that's really cool and super fascinating. I heard you describing this experiment from the other room. It's wild. There's a whole set of experiments in this area. Yeah. Yep. Well, also, too, you know, it's crazy. Okay, so talking about experiments, um, there was a video I watched uh, on YouTube that was basically like, how does Japan teach World War II to its to its um, citizens? And, you know, they overall basically kind of deny it. Um, they just kind of like, we were hanging out with China and boom, Americans dropped a bomb on us. They like kind of gloss over it. But there's a lot of like scientific experiments that they did with within war that like it was it was attached with torture, but essentially they just did stuff like to try to figure out what the brain and the body could do, you know, and devising different ways of medicine and also warfare. So we won't get super graphic, but listening to some of the experiments was like this was in the 1940s. Like we don't, you know, that was a long time ago, but it's not that long ago. So it's crazy to, to, to kind of still hear about some crazy experiments that somebody had, like, you know, uh, 80 years ago. Was it 60 years ago? Oh, 80 years ago. But anyway, it, it's trippy to just think, like, that happened, you know? You guys gotta look it up. I'll send you the link if you're interested. It's crazy. I don't want to get too gory. But they did some really weird shit. <laughs> I get, like, that watching... Uh, back in hack and slash movies the reason why i don't watch them oh that's funny yeah also in saw there's a guy which needs to cut off his feet to escape my feet also felt weird after watching that yeah isn't that insane yeah that stuff trips me out because that's just you know your brain is that powerful it it's it witnesses and experiments and tries to relate to what it is you're seeing Oh, it's it's crazy. Okay. Let's see. Do we? I'm curious on going off subject. Better two. Try. Uh, kind of curious on. Besides his tattoo, which we still need to do. 
Did he have any cuts on his body? Did he get messed up? Besides, his face got messed up, but we already acknowledged that. I don't think they drew any cuts on him. Yeah, I don't think so. I think they left his body pretty much alone. This part was so cool. Yeah. Okay. So maybe what we'll do... She stepped on his chest a little bit. So I think what we'll do is maybe we'll bruise up his chest a little bit. Just like some simple kind of uh, dark purples and reds. That might be kind of cool. Maybe kind of bruise a little bit more. Just add some bruising to him. I think might be kind of cool. At this point, it's just kind of stylized in the direction I want to take it. We need to get a clear picture of, um, yeah, we need to get a clear picture of, uh, of his snake on his chest. And my airbag is replaced. Oh, nice. That's right. The Ford guy came over. All right. Okay, cool. Fun fact, good horror games actually use this type of psychologic stuff, for example, at a special amount of Slable and beat per minute, you feel fear. And they actually use that a lot. Yeah, music plays a lot in that. The tone of something can shift just based on... It's just based on um, the sounds you hear, too. Yeah. Good. A lot of uh, jump scare slasher movies use that trick to get you tense up so when they had the jump scare moment, you, like, be freaked out. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm always intrigued by that stuff. And yet that stuff still gets me, so you know. <laughs> like, I'm not a big horror movie fan. There are some movies I love to watch. Uh, it's really the love of it. Sometimes it's good to watch old school horror movies like Hellraiser because hey, they're great, but they're, they are cheesy. <laughs> so some, some movies have just gone too far in the attempt to that they just end up being fun okay let's get that snake uh let's all right let's how do they draw it in the film that's how they drew it okay let's lo load up my reference i love hellraiser i love it too yeah but it is cheesy it's <laughs> I'm a huge JCVD fan, and his movies are cheesy as, as they're so cheesy. But I love them. Oh, interesting. Oh, you guys want to see something interesting? Okay. This is from the Street Fighter 2 movie. This is from the same movie. Snake? No snake. Snake? No snake. <laughs> At least I think this pulled from the zoo. 
Was one a flashback? May. Maybe. I don't know. It could be. Maybe. Interesting. and It's still interesting. I, I found that fast. Okay. All right. We're going to... I think we're going to go pretty simple with that. Magical disappearing tattoo? Yeah. I'm a fan of psychological horror. Not super into slashers or gore fest aside from the cheesy classics. You're right. Exactly. You want a magical disappearing tattoo as well? Yeah. Don't we all? Okay. All right. So I think it's going to be pretty good example of that so we're gonna put this up here let's do battle it's like a mood ring <laughs> Ooh, yeah that's crazy all right let's do the battle and then we we get on to some some art you have one just need a black light maybe it only shows up in his final form I think you're right. Oh, don't mind me stretching. Yeah, that ink is pretty cool. I have a UV light. You can pop on there. All right. Ooh Do you print your own stuff? Yes, I, 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 I do, I do, uh, I do print my own, my own work. Yes. All right. Got the loyalty chest happening. All right. Okay. Now let's see. I think we're just gonna stay down at the bottom yeah that's actually how i learned how to cut keys and all that stuff even with articulation i'm able to um to test a good a good amount of stuff with it yeah i did notice some more quest nice all right there we go all right so we're gonna stream for another half hour and then we're gonna take a lunch break where I just got an intermission, and then, then we'll end up coming back. Okay. Alright, let's block out his tattoo. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to... We're going to uh, use layers for this. And I need to see one more thing. Let's see. Um, Vega Street... Uh, hold on. Street Fighter Vega Tattoo. I need to see how it wraps around his whole body. Okay, perfect. We'll use a collectible for that. Why not? Somebody's already done the work. I'm not gonna try to reinvent the wheel. Cool. All right, that's gonna make it a lot easier. So we're gonna take, take the same purple in his pants. And we're going to use the damn standard. And yeah, we're just going to go ahead and... It's going to be... It's also... Focal shift to sharp. Oops. Let's put the layer back on. So I need to start a layer. What? What? Why aren't you painting anymore? Did I turn RGB off? No. As soon as I hit... Stop it. Delete that layer. Delete that. Oh, come on. Are you serious right now? I thought you couldn't... 
layer color. Okay, well, it doesn't want to do that, so fine. Never mind. What kind of printer do you have? Resin or filament? I have both. I have an Epax X1 resin printer, um, which is equivalent to Elgu Mars, which I have uh, operated with Elgu Mars as well. Um, very similar, great machines. And then I also have a uh, Ender 3 Pro uh, F uh, FDM printer. Both of them are really, really good. All right, well, I tried to use layers for paint, and I don't know. It wasn't working for some reason, so there might be a setting I'm missing. Delete layer, invert. Yeah, I'm not quite sure, and that's why I never really think of layers, and that's okay. So we're just going to do this the best we can. Luckily, it's just painting. Okay, cool. We'll focus in on the snake head after we get the main shape of the snake, so. And what we will do is actually, we'll take um, the natural skin tone. Maybe a little bit more red right there. There we go. I'm just kind of draw this out. We'll clean this up as we get closer to it. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, let's actually. Okay, I'm just kind of looking on how this. This is set up here. So I want this to come across his body like this. Okay. Like such. All right. That's pretty cool. And then. interesting i'm not really sure where these snake coils come in they look like they just wrap around it's very bizarre let me see if i get another picture funny is how many interpretations of the same tattoo there is but in the we're going film accurate as best we can oh okay I think I see it now all right this is where layers would be helpful okay I see it's supposed to technically wrap up here. Which then would wrap around. We'll put that under there like that. Maybe something like that. Come up. Should this wrap around? And his head is on his left peck, 
this comes around. Okay, we'll go ahead and oops, select that color. Just to kind of sharpen this up a little bit. zoom in here it's a pretty simple it's a pretty simple shape so we're gonna go ahead and down here come down let's get that jaw like that a little bit okay super focused on this one Let's go ahead and take the paintbrush now. The BPA. Let's turn off. Let's get a more solid brush. Turn up the color. Now we can add the eye here in a second. So let's actually bring this down. Okay, let's go back to the damn standard because we want to add the teeth. Like such. Now for the eye, we're going to go ahead and that portion in such okay let's turn that lazy mouse back on I'm going to kind of sharpen this up a little bit. We don't have to get that all in one stroke. There we go. We want this to look nice. So let's go ahead and get that wrapped around. Then we'll do the belly next. Because I do want that level of detail in the tattoo. What I'm thinking about doing is getting a nice sharp edge. I might raise 
the skin tone, the skin up a little bit, as if, you know, like kind of like with a scar. Um, so that way we actually get a um, little bit of guidance too. So if anybody ever wants to paint it, they'll actually have, uh, they don't have to invent the wheel again. They can just come in here and with their brush, find the, uh, the raised spots and then work with that. Hey, hey, Wandering, what's up, buddy? Hello, hello, my friend. I hope you're having a great day. Yeah, you know, I am. I am having a good day. Thank you for asking. How are you, buddy? How was your stream yesterday? I wasn't able to come back uh, afterwards, but looked like you were having fun with your dual stream. That was cool, man. Just uh, poly painting at the moment. I'm actually really focused on getting this tattoo looking pretty good. Sentence I never thought I'd actually say. <laughs> Not that I'm actually tattooing, but you know. Doing good. Thank you for the raid, man. No worries. I totally get the post stream hunger. It's a very real thing. Oh, yeah. And I stream for six hours, uh, you know, with a break in between, and I just feel kind of jet lagged. Even just a little bit. So, yeah. But cool, man. Actually, this is really cool. I'm really digging this part. Whoops. There we go. Yeah, it takes a lot of energy to string that long. It really does, yeah. And it's funny too, you know? You don't really think about that the first few times you do it until after you do it. Then you're like, oh, yeah, that's... That takes a bit. That takes a little bit. <laughs> All right. There we go. Okay. That already looks a lot better. Just having that that tattoo there. Let's we gotta finish it though. We got a few more minutes to do that. Every time I stream, I have all the energy in the world while I'm live, but as soon as I click end stream button, it all hits me at once. Yeah. That's why I'm thinking, um, I have a few things pending right now that I may have to uh that may pull me away from streaming as often as I've been streaming right now, um, which is a good thing. But what I'm thinking about doing is still holding those stream days, but I'm thinking about only going live for like an like two hours and then then working. Uh, so that way I could still like host my own stream, but I will still have all the energy to continue working and be more focused in on that stuff, which is would be really, really exciting for sure. Okay. Now, 
we have this little gap right here. But yeah, streaming for six hours, that's, yeah, it's definitely a lot. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay, check this out. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to Z plugin. And we're going to go to Z color, a feature that I think is completely underutilized. I'm going to go ahead and drag this color here, hit set color. And that's going to give me my RGB value. It's also going to give me this hex value, which is what I want. So I'm going to copy that hex value. I'm going to close that down. And then what I like to do is try to find complementary colors. So color slash uh, color.adobe.com. I use this all the time. And then I'll go to complementary. I'll come down here, just paste, and get like colors. Um, let's also do double split complementary. Okay. So I'm thinking I want just a lighter shade of. Let's go try it actually. Let's see if we can get something on that. I don't want green, it's a lighter. It's a lighter tone. Okay. Maybe let's try this color. What we could do too, actually. Is what we could do. Actually, let's go to uh let's go to Z plugin, let's go to Z color. Interesting, that's kind of like a muted green, kind of a weird blue. Okay. Let's switch color. Let's set that color to a lighter tone. Something like that. Okay. Let's close this down. Maybe what we'll do, let's take poly, let's take poly paint. And let's adjust colors. Go ahead and zoom in real quick. We're going to mask the purple, which is what we want. Now let's try to get it a little bit more, maybe towards... Actually, let's go ahead and mask that for a second. Realize what we can do here. I know I went purple, but I guess it's more of a... I guess we could just do something like this. Quickly color that how we want. So many different versions of this. Let's see, uh, I have myself scheduled for three hours at a time, but end up doing more like five or seven hours. I lose track of time because it's no, it's because it's so fun. But yeah, it's exhausting. Yep, I agree. I'm doing what you told me yesterday. Post it in Blender if you want to see how it's going. Yeah, I would love to see how it's going. You caught me at a good time because I'm going to be taking a lunch break here in a second. Nice. Okay, yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, setting it up. Cool, getting a good arch. Yeah, nice. Great. Cool. Now just, yeah, continue working on filling out the rest of the body and then move things that seem out of place, but... Yeah, that's, a, that's, start, that's the starting of a good block out, my friend. Good, good stuff. Okay, let's actually go a little lighter with this then. Yeah, no problem, man. Okay. Let's take our damn standard. Let's go ahead and switch. We're just working with the color, of course. That might be a little too vibrant. Okay. Thought I grabbed the right shade. Where are you, right? I did not. Oh. My bad. Okay. There we go. All right, there we go. Yeah, and how did how does that feel so far, uh, blocking out the the trunk like that?
Yeah, really easy. Oh, nice. That's good here. I'm glad. Nice, nice, man. If it makes it easier, that's that's the important part. There we go. And it's helping me for my draws. Nice. Good. Well, I'm glad it was helpful, man. But yeah, keep pushing it. It's going to look really good. You can already tell. Okay. Now there's a bit of a twist here. So we're going to acknowledge that twist. At his armpit. That's a good transition spot, I think. that go ahead and grab the standard paintbrush and just kind of fill it in a little bit Let's turn on the lazy mouse for this part so we can get nice sharp lines let's also get a tighter focal shift No, it's funny, I never actually... It's probably the first... Tat... Well, okay, maybe not. Uh, I think... Maybe Harley Quinn was, but... I feel like that tattoo was very repetitive. But this is... Okay, so this would be the second tattoo that I've painted in ZBrush. I find that to be... I think it's pretty cool. I want to find more characters with artwork like this. damn standard because it's coming to a sharp edge there we go all right there we go now let's grab the paintbrush again Not really worried about overlap because we're going to be ending up drawing the snake body uh, folds as well. So a little bit of overlap is okay. But yeah, I think what I'm going to do is end up drawing, or after I paint this, I'm going to end up uh, using the colors and raising, so masking them out and then raising uh, raising them up a little bit. So that way, they'll A, it'll look really cool as a clay render, but then B, it'll give painters something to, uh, well, guide themselves in their paint. So... This is also the perfect music to listen to while painting this. It's very KMFDM. Hopefully you guys can hear it. Never can tell.
Not anymore. It's now quiet. Go. Yep, we can hear pretty good. Nice. Nice, yeah. Somebody, when I tweeted that uh, my work in progress last week, somebody was like, I really hope you're listening to KMFDN. <laughs> and I was like, man, I wish I could. I was scoping this on the stream. I don't think uh, they had liked that very much. But immediately listened to that album afterwards. All right. There we go. There we go. Okay, so now we can finish the snake body. Let's go ahead and grab the damn standard. And we'll grab the darker color of the paintbrush. And now he just has these markings here. So, same color. try to keep them relatively even in the spacing but I'm not gonna go super crazy anal on it just want it to be fairly good then we'll do stream raiders and then we're gonna take our little break getting hungry Well, I'll tell you, this is that part. This is the tedious part sometimes where it's just like I get a little antsy. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, let's make that line as clean as I can. What am I planning to eat? Ooh, um, I have some uh, corned beef leftovers that are calling my name. Corned beef here is uh, seasonal, typically. So right around end of January, early February, uh, people get their, their shipments brought in. And I love it. I usually eat a crap ton of corned beef between February and April, and then it goes away. Which is a bummer. I can make it myself, but it's just a lot of time. Really time consuming to do that. So I just get the, the packaged pre-season and then cook that. And then that usually goes for like a a meal or meal or three, depending on how much we eat. Mm, corned beef hash, my favorite breakfast. Oh yeah, it's so good. Yeah, I'm sure if I went to like a butcher or something, if there was one in the area that wasn't a price hike and a half. Um, that probably would be pretty cool. Okay, I'd probably get it more often. But all right, so here is his tattoo, which you know we might refine it just a little bit more, get some more sharp ed edges cleaned up here. Um, I think his mouth is a little weird. Let's do that real quick. Let's just grab here. Yeah, something like this. Like that. Let's actually grab the spot right here. 
right there. Luckily, it's not a super complex tattoo, so. Let's come in and refine it the best way we can. There we go. And then what we could do is we can actually take, uh, we could adjust colors, for example, grab. No, 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 stop, stop, stop. Let's go to mask. Go to masking, mask by poly, by color, by poly paint. Let's grab this guy. Oh, okay. Really, you're going to do that. Weird. All right, we'll 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 sort that out. We'll just make a mask. All right, I'm out for the day. I wish everyone an amazing day and Ian, enjoy your meal. Happy Friday. See you Friday. Oh, see you Friday. Yes. See you, everybody, Friday. See you, Martin. Have a good one, buddy. All the purpose meat, corned beef, hash, breakfast. Reuben sandwich, lunch, Jake's dinner. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad I'm eating right now. <laughs> All right, let's do a stream right now. Let's do it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Easy peasy, as I say. All right, all right, all right. We got Death Sacrament, and I need to sleep now, too. There you guys go. All right. All right, we're gonna, we're just, we're just gonna stay down. That works. All right. And this is level three. I'm trying to just get my warrior stuff up. All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and take a break uh, just to get some lunch and uh, and so forth. And then we'll be back about half hour. So I'll see you guys when I get back.
Hello. Hello, people. Hello, people. You guys want that stream raider action? Let's do it. Hello, hello. Hello. All right. Ooh. Tamara, I love that. I love that little... Blender just crashed. Oh, of course it did. That's that's Blender for you, man. <laughs> I love that little emote you got going on there. It's like a fire... It looks like a fire chili. Is that what it is? It's fucking awesome. I love it. All right. You lost all your progress. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, dude. Well, I'm sorry, buddy. Ooh, just put my glove on and it's wet. <laughs> I had my drink sitting on it and all this condensation, so I'm not, not going to use that. Hello, hello. All right, man, I need to sleep. I'm so sorry, dude. That That's a bummer. I have a hammer if that makes it easier. I've I had that happen countless times. J. Crew, death, Kamara. There you guys go. You got your stuff. I almost wish it was mine. I love habaneros, but at least I have it. Ha <laughs> ha. Exactly. Yeah, it would. Yeah, I had my drink sitting on my glove. Now it's all condensated wet. So that's gross. <laughs> Just going to do it again. You know what? Look at it this way. I need to sleep. Practice. It's just, it's forcing you to have practice. I know it's really hard to think that, but um, it's sometimes the only way I can wrap my head around that. Because that shit sucks. All right. Maybe it's better to practice more. Yeah, exactly. That's how, that's how you have to chalk it up. That's how I have to chalk it up, or else I'll lose my mind. <laughs> I mean, just, just being real about it. All right. All right, let's see here. Let's go to store. Let's go to scrolls, warrior scrolls. Refresh. I want some more warrior scrolls. I want to make it. I want to make it. I want to make it. There we go. More warrior scrolls. There we go. Come on. Specialize. Ooh. Ooh. Let's see. Uh, specialized melee that deals 50% more damage. Specialized melee that grants 30% more damage boost nearby allies every 7 seconds. Specialized melee unit that deals 100% base damage to nearby enemies on death. Oh. Oh my goodness. Oh, I don't know. Hey, Death. Look at my options. Which one would you choose? It used to make me so mad when I lost work and had to redo it, but at this point, I'm able to see it as practice. Plus, the second time is usually a lot faster and a bit better. Exactly, yeah. That's the only way you can really do it. Rally Warrior? That's what I was thinking. Select it! Do it! I did it. It is 20. It is 20. All of a sudden my throat's cracking after it. <laughs> it's some water. It's some water. All right. Yeah. All those upgrades finally did that part. All right. Let's go ahead and add. Has it been enough time for the Orc Slayer to get placed? Not yet. So we're just going to go ahead and boost that specialized guy up. Yeah. Okay. So this is where we are right now. So now we're just... We're, we're getting ready to start rendering. Uh, it's getting to that point. Now we're just kind of making sure everything else gets... Uh, it gets pretty well done. All right, so what, what I wanted to do was select. Um, what I wanted to do was actually select, uh, get a different color. So 
Mask by saturation. Perfect. There we go. That's really what I want to do. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use a thick skin for this. So we're going to go to thick skin. We're going to apply that. And I want to have it a bit raised. And now I'm just going to go ahead and take the standard brush. And see if that works. Does that work? No, that doesn't work. Okay. Maybe. What if we just scale that out a little bit? Or we'll take the move brush and kind of pull it out. What I tried to do is learn, what I tried to do is learn, is I mix something without reference, then reference, and with the last. Interesting. Okay, so you try it, and then you pull your reference and correct it. That's not a bad method. Whatever works. Everybody has their own method of doing it. That actually makes pretty good sense. Um... I try really hard to just kind of, uh, I just try to see the reference and then go from there. But, but yeah, if that works for you, do it, you know? Just get in the habit of saving more. That's the best thing you could do. All right, let's mask his chest. He's not Sagat, so we don't need to scar it. Kind of pick some of the areas that I think should be pretty good. We're going to mask it all off. Okay. Just want this raised a little bit. Yeah. Well, again, sorry that's that crashed anybody. That's that's tough. Alright, let's take the clay build up. Maybe we could just kind of lightly come over it and raise it up. But that's looking pretty good. Hello! How much longer will it take to finish this mod? Uh, we're almost done actually. Really just greatly depends on me, I guess. <laughs> if I'm being honest. Uh, but we're going over texturing and painting. So I'm hoping to be done with it uh, fairly soon, actually. I want to get to the rendering phase today, but the best part about sculpting statues is that you want it to be as perfect as possible, right? But the reality is that you're going to see your mistakes and there's going to be things that you hid. There's going to be things that you kind of shortcutted to get a certain look. And then you're going to want to fix that to make it work. Uh, but at this point, we're getting close to the end. And so what I was going for here was actually making sure that the stat, the, uh, whatchamacallit, the um, tattoo was actually raised up enough. So, how are you doing? Nice, I just finished a model and I'm rendering. Nice, that's really awesome. Do share, I would love to see what you were working on. Yeah. Yeah, when it comes to my sculpts, I have a, uh, unless I am under a client deadline, which you know, a good client will give you a good deadline. Um, I tend to fall under the however long it takes to make it look good. That's how long it takes. This man. 
Yeah, I sent over to your Discord. Perfect. Do it. I want to see. I want to see what you're doing. There we go. All right. There we go. Now, if we take a look at it. Yeah. All right. We see the makings of what could be a tattoo. Just perfect. Let's get it a little bit more there. One second. Do, 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 do. Oh, cool. Very nice. That is looking really cool. I love the scratches on it, too. Nice. Very nice. I like it, dude. Good job. Great job. So this out so yeah now we can kind of see it raised up a bit where the tattoo would be I think that's pretty cool yeah I think that's cool it gives us enough information because when I do 3d prints I like there to be a little bit of a stencil almost when it gets painted, but if you decide to keep it in black and white, um, or just, you know, a base, a base color, I like to have a lot of that information there, especially if it makes the character who it is. Yeah, the original image does not want to go because it has 8K. Yeah, yeah, uh, this, yeah, that's a lot of space on my Discord. Of, of course, man. No, the work looks great. All right, let's go ahead and finalize a few different things real quick. So we made these cracks. Let's go ahead and go to masking. Get a mask by cavity, which is right up here. And instead of 100%, we're gonna do 80%. And we're gonna go ahead and switch that over. Actually, let's, turn around. let's grab this red, go deeper with it. let's clear that mask maybe for this we will mask pretty harsh turn lazy mouse off okay perfect now what we'll do is we'll actually just control our paint we'll just give it a little bit of depth but yeah go so what we'll do is we'll control the red and then we'll also get kind of a lighter a lighter tone let's actually go color spray alpha Kind of just do a little bit of variation, like such. Just give it a little bit of a highlight and depth. Let's go ahead and save this real quick. It's working pretty high. I've got 64 million polys right now, really pushing it. So that out. Invert the mask. I'll start bringing up some of this color intensity. Yes. 
model's impeccable, even though I don't know much. Uh, I don't know which anime it is from, but I like it very much. Oh, thank you so much. That means a lot. Um, it's from Street Fighter 2, the animated movie, circa 1994. Yeah, I tried to keep it as authentic to it as possible. Sometimes I can be, I can be very challenging with anime in particular, just because there's not a lot of information. But um, thank you for the compliment. Seriously, that's that's what I try. I try. Okay, here we go. Now we're gonna bring in some highlight color. Just a little bit. Yeah, and this will be for 3D print as well, so can't wait to get to that point. But today we're just gonna focus on rendering um, and final finalizing the paint. There we go. Well, let's actually go ahead now. Let's turn on preview AO. And let's actually kick it down to like 10, just a little bit of AO. Yeah, just give it some depth. The only anime I like are Full Metal, Brotherhood, Demon Slayer, and I'm watching Hunter x Hunter. Oh, nice. Okay, what do you think of Demon Slayer? Because I love it. And I haven't seen Hunter x Hunter, but I've watched episodes with my brother who has seen it. Uh, what do you think of those? I mean... Yeah, Demon Slayer is great. That movie needs to come out in the U.S., by the way. <laughs> needs to happen. All right, Mass by Cavity. What we're going to do here, we're actually going to enhance some of this, uh, this visually. So we're going to come down here to uh, Deformation, which is actually above masking. We're going to input the contrast really bring that wood out and then let's go to masking mask by cavity switch that over and we're going to just kind of let's see if this works that might be crushing it that's a little too much that's too much okay let's dial that back Let's actually go to our contrast brush. I think it's going to be the best way to do it. Movie I've already seen because it leaked here in Brazil. Ah, you lucky then. <laughs> You're lucky, damn. <laughs> it's been so long since I watched any anime. I should fix that. Yeah, fix that. What are you doing, Kamara? What are you doing? Go. All right, let's bring out some of that detail. Wood grain with a contrast brush. Yeah. Kamara, which anime would you, would you uh, like to watch? Uh, you will cry a lot, just warn you. Oh man. Yeah, I knew that show was gonna be good because I cried in the first episode. Oh. So, I, I can only imagine, and uh, yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. Oh man, that's gonna be great. All right, let's uh, go ahead and grab this color. I'm gonna do kind of like a splotchy brown. But very light. Just to give it a little bit of texture. If you want to cry, watch the silent voice. Oh, uh, no, no. I actually, um, my daughter just watched that movie with her mom. And uh, yep, I'm good. I was cured. I never have to watch that. <laughs> I know enough about it. I was like, OK, got the synopsis. <laughs> I heard it was beautiful and well done, but yeah. Used to love Gundam. You keep hearing the name Demon Slayer. Maybe I should watch that. Okay, Kamara. Kamara, here we go. Okay, Kamara. Here's what you're going to do. Check this out. I'm sure you have a moment. 
And you can feel free to mute me. But check this out. Okay. Mara. There you go. <laughs> uh you thought your name was better? I actually wanted to see your name. Um that got that got pulled from Funimation on the US side, or at least on my side. I, I wanna watch it though. Gray from the Fireflies is for maximum tears. <laughs> nice. Ian, could you make a model of Demon Slayer? No, just give an idea. Actually I have an idea. Okay, check this out. Um Check, check this out. Okay. Uh, Demon, uh, I have an idea to do this. Um, I found this wallpaper, and this is the concept I want to work from. As soon as it loads. Wow, I feel like I'm running on a modem right now. This is the, the what I want to do. There you go. This is the, the sculpt I want to do. Tanjiro and Netsuko like this. And I'm actually really working on, um, this is the concept I want to pull. And I'm uh, every piece I've been doing, including the current one, has been leading me up to doing this piece. Oh, you must see your name? Okay, cool. Yeah, is it 1995? <laughs> I know, right? Friend of mine made one, but it was Tanjiro with the sword on fire. Yes. Yeah, I think I know who you might be talking about. I've seen some really cool stuff. So anyway, this is the... Uh... Here. It'll generate a link. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, download that. Um, This is the one I want to, to do, so I'm working up to it. And as you can see here, if you take a look at my piece as it is right now... Based on that piece I've been looking at, you can kind of get the idea of why I'm choosing certain certain ones that I'm confident I can do. But if I don't do a good Demon Slayer piece, I'll like hang up my hat. <laughs> so really wanted to make sure that I would uh, do it. So that's one of the big projects coming up soon that I want to stream. But um, also too, I mean, I was actually told recently by a few artists, um, that uh, I definitely should be doing more anime since I can hit the look pretty well. And so I want to do more anime projects. If you made it, I could buy it in print, buy on the spot. Oh, when it, well, you'll see when it starts happening. <laughs> but yeah, I have goals, man, and we're going to be hitting them. All right, um, let's texture the books. And then that's it. I think that's going to be it. Let's see what kind of texture we can get on the books. Oh, hold on one second. We actually need to paint the floor first. Yeah, that floor is a little... It's a little... little clean. Let's muddy it up a little bit. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited for that piece. I've just been, like I said, leading up to wanting to do a good job with it. All right, let's tone that back down a little bit. Like such. There we go. Doesn't need to be super dark. Okay, we have the streets on one side. We have the apartment on the other. And now let's let's see if we can texture the books a little bit. And then I think we're going to start getting it ready to move to Marmoset. Now, this is 64.8 million polys. I'm going to tell you right now, Marmoset's going to die, cry, and scream at me if I even attempt to bring that over. So we're going to have to decimate. So we'll figure out a good decimation process but i think we could do it pretty pretty easily just might take a little bit of of tlc all right for the book texture let's actually go to the drag tool let's go to import 
actually hold that thought. Are there textures here that I could use? I think I kind of want to use something that's a little bit more leathery. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. ZBrush has a bunch of textures. You just kind of have to, like, hunt for them. It's metal wood. It says ground. This actually might work out pretty well. There we go. Okay. Let's take this image. And let's actually go ahead and make alpha from that image. Ooh, yeah, that might work. Yeah, I have to watch Demon Slayer. Yay! Enjoy. There we go. Yeah, Demon Slayer's great. Oh, sweet. Thank you. There we go. Yeah, Demon Slayer and My Hero Academia were the two animes that I watched the first episode and immediately was like in tears. It's just a it's just great. It's just a great show. Go. There we go. Now I'm not really I'm being such kind of like not really nitpicky at all with what kind of book texture this is because these books are going to be small. So I don't really care if it's a repeating kind of funky pattern. I just want it to have a little bit of texture. Um, but because they're so tiny, it's not really going to matter. I'll just have something for the paint to dive into. I was waiting for the movie in Japan, but Corona, yeah. Yeah, they said the U.S. is going to get it in October of this year, if we're lucky. <laughs> I'm a fan of a lot of animes that involve supernatural type stuff. Mush Mushishi, or of course, Full Metal Alchemist. Vampire Hunter D was my fave anime. Oh, or your was your first anime. Nice. You mean you didn't watch Dragon Ball Z? <laughs> no, no, no DBZ or Dragon Ball Super. I'm actually surprised that how many more people don't watch that show. Jojutsu Kaisen is really cool now. Oh, really? Okay. Interesting. Okay. I'm going to have to check that one out. All right. Um well, shit, guys. I think we're, I think we're, we're pretty much done sculpting this project. I'm looking at it, and now I'm getting the sense that I could just be noodling it all day long. Google it. It's very cool. Did watch DBZ, but Vampire Hunter was my first. Nice. And what did you think of Dragon Ball? And Dragon Ball is, it's, I, I find it hilarious because there's a. People love it or they hate it. I've never found an in-between. Um, or they're, the people would say, yeah, it's cool. But they usually, when they say that, they don't usually lend themselves to liking it. Um, so I feel like it's a love or hate. But in my opinion, it's one of the best uh, one of the best Shoto animes around. I mean, they really like set the bar back in the 80s. <laughs> uh, let's see. It was uh, Juju Su Kaisen. Oh, okay. Is it worth watching? The fights and animations are super great. The fight from the end to the first episode is extremely well executed and hooked me up for the rest of the series. Animation is not good of all good. Okay. <laughs> People ask. Interesting. 
All right, I will definitely have to check this out. Let me just get a little clip of it. I just want a little, I want a little taste. Uh, trailer. There we go. It's like Demon Slayer. Ooh, really? Nice. Let me just kind of give, oh, I just want the sense of the world. Oh, the music that I'm listening to actually goes really well with this. <laughs> wow, okay. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I like it. You're in between? <laughs> DB was never my favorite, although I loved it when things actually happened. But there was too much standing around and charging up. Yeah, yeah, that that is the thing, and that's what's funny is I understand people who who fall on that sword of being like, yeah, it's okay, but there's too much talk or there's too much standing around or too much powering up. But the one thing that I found interesting was back when it was actually airing in Japan, what, what the reason why it's so long is because it needed to air every single day. It was one of the few animes that got an every single day greenlit spot live. So an episode had to extend itself so that they could pack in as much um, filler content to allow it to be played every day all year long. Like there was no seasons, it just always played. So that's, that's the reason for it. And I can understand why it's annoying now because we're used to binge watching stuff. But it's funny, if you kind of go back and look at it, it's like, nope, that makes sense why they did that. That's why Super is a little bit different. Even though there's clear filler episodes, the the sagas in the Super series move faster just because the times have changed. But Dragon Ball Z definitely is a very slow anime because of all the filler necessary to make it work. Um, which I thought that was kind of a cool little little tidbit about it. Okay. All right, let's take our paintbrush real quick. Real quick. But yeah, I, I do completely understand it when people are like, yeah, Dragon Ball. It's, yeah. it's like, no, that makes sense. Did I acknowledge what? Oh. The streamer, you know not. <laughs> All right, sounds good. I heard my name. I got one right here. <laughs> Not ready. Chinese. Chinese American. Yep. Let's see. Uh, it's like One Piece. The past episode reminded me in like it's like five minutes. Oh, okay. And the OP is like three. Oh, nice. All right. Well, you sold me. I need to sleep. You sold me on it, so I'm excited. All right, I want to see something with this shirt real quick. So it's one of those things where like I noticed one little thing. So what we're going to do is actually lower the subdivision on this. We're going to hit move. I want to try this. I think the bagginess takes away from the character. Pardon me, from the character's appeal. So what I want to do is fix that. Like here and like here. And then I want to actually take the inflate brush. Actually push this together a little bit. And I want to mask this one spot right here. Soften it, finish pushing that together. Yeah, okay, I think that's better. It was a little too baggy for me. We gotta show off the assets of the character.
I watched it on Toonami, so there was no binge watching. Oh god, yeah. But yeah, it felt like it took weeks for things to happen. That totally makes sense, though. Yeah, it really did. Here, was, oh, watching it on Toonami. Let me tell you the. Oh, you. I'm sure you know Kamara, but the frustrating thing for me was going to um, was uh, when they started the Na the, the Namekian saga, and they finally got to Namek, and um, Gohan and Krillin are like trying desperately to fend themselves off of, from the Ginyu Force, and then you know Goku's about ready to land. And then you, the next day you're at school, you're like, oh my god, Goku's gonna land and shit's gonna go down. And you get back there, his tsunami starts, four o'clock, you sit down, episode one, Gohan, little Dragon Ball in his head, he's in the forest. They restarted it. And they did that all the time. And it was so frustrating. So you had to watch all the way through to the Mechian saga again for a couple extra episodes. And then they restarted. It took forever to kick Frieza's ass. And then eventually what they did was they, like, when they got to Frieza, they had restarted back with, uh, the Gu with the Ginyu Force again. So, yeah, I got re Tsunami was terrible with that crap. <laughs> Alright, Stream Raiders. And then we're gonna get ready to decimate and stuff, so. But yeah, that, oh god, that was so frustrating. So frustrating. Like, what the hell? guys know I want Goku. I then later realized it was due to dub recording, but you know, too little too late sometimes it felt like. I'll fix this camera real quick. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Yep. I remember being super confused when the Cell Saga started because they hadn't finished the freak. Yes. Yeah, you did spell it right the first the first time. Yeah. Nope, you got it right. Yep. I remember watching Trunks kill Frieza, uh, Frieza Mech, or Mech Frieza, or, uh, like 40 times before we finally got through the Android Saga. <laughs> I think actually Toonami made it worse. I think the kids in Japan got it the best when it was live. They just kept going. Like, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Whereas us Americans are like, oh yeah, you like that? You like that? Start over. <laughs> actually, what was funny was um, on uh, Telemundo. Um, I forget, 52. Telemundo 52 in, uh, Los, in Los Angeles. Um, they actually got the episodes in Spanish faster than we got dubbed English. So I would watch those to to move forward with the saga. I didn't know what they were saying and didn't care, but I was like, yep, let's do it. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm literally going to wait the 50 seconds. You guys can place units. But I'm like, I want to put that orc down, so I'm, I'm going to. We'll just wait for him over here. Okay. There we go. I think that I think that that uh, looks a little bit better. You can probably accentuate the this one wrinkle that got squished a little bit. Got squished a little bit. We can do this guy right here. Here we go. The squish. I feel like Toonami suddenly switched time slots on me too, so it was suddenly earlier and DBZ slot was was ten, Tenchi Muto. Yes, it was. You're right. It was. Yeah. Because they also started getting other shows like uh, they got like Reboot and a few other shows that were going into the time slot. Um, they also like pushed Sailor Moon through a few other ones. Um, yeah. The guy who sang the opening of DBZ in Spanish died. Oh, no! Oh, that's a bummer. Sorry to hear that. Oh, crap. Alright. Alright. Okay, guys. I think... 
I mean, I'm sure that we'll find stuff to fix when we go to prep for 3D printing on Friday. But uh, I think this is, um, I, I think it's getting, I think it's done. I'm always hesitant to say that. <laughs> Let's start prepping for a render. Uh, what do you guys think? Hey, you know, if, this, if there's anything that stands out to you, let me know. But I think we're ready to go on to render. I don't mind my work being critiqued. I like it. Yeah, it was originally just DBZ, then Sailor Moon, and Gundam Wing. Then they slowly added a few others. Yep. The openings of old anime in Spanish is just too good. It really is. Yeah. Like like, uh, like in Japan, Spanish really uses a lot of music to help set the tone and feeling, and they put their all into it. Whereas um, I feel like American shows kind of miss that mark. You have to hear Saint say it off in Spanish. Ooh, okay. Send it over. I'll listen to it afterwards. That's where I saw Cowboy Bebop for the first time. I didn't like it at the time, but I absolutely loved the movie and the show definitely grew on me. Yeah. I've seen bits and pieces of that show. It's it's fun on its own. Um, Arun, uh, what's the name of that show? Roni Ketchin was one of my favorite animes. Uh, back in high school, they played that too on Toonami for a while. Although I did not care for the English dub as much as I like the Japanese. Just felt flat in the acting. <laughs> Alright, I will I will I will check this out afterwards. I don't want to get copyrighted. Alright. Well guys. Well guys, I, let's start moving it over to Toolbag. And I have a feeling we're gonna get some really cool renders looking like this. This is a really nice angle, I think. Just because we get to see her face, we get to see the action, we get to see his face, we get to see the action. Uh, I think this is gonna make a great turntable. I think so what I like to do at this point is I like to create a new folder and call this final render and then I like to go ahead and save this out as a different sub tool final render as zero one because changes will probably happen and then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open up all these folders. Okay, we're gonna open all this up. And now what we're gonna do is start with Vega and we're gonna delete the things that we don't need. So this random fingernail here, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that, we don't need it. Let's see here. Okay. Also gonna turn on. I like to turn on. Um, what you might call it? Uh, yeah, solo, and I like to turn on uh, poly groups. And what I'm also looking for too is what is um, what's dynamically subdivided and what's not. And we're gonna re we're gonna apply all the subdivision. So we're gonna apply this subdivision. I'm just gonna go through the body, check everything. Okay, let's go ahead and apply the hair. I'll even move that up a subdivision level. Apply this and move it up a bit. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> okay, and we're gonna keep applying Everything that is necessary. Oh no, don't go on the folder. There we go. Okay. It's obviously going to kick up the subdivision too. Okay. Just 
just going through all the hair. Perfect. Okay. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is now go all the way back up to the top of the hair. Because this is this part's just the render, we're just gonna group like things together. Okay, so these claws. Actually, what we're gonna do real quick here, let's solo this out. We're actually going to split hit in on this. Okay, here. Gonna split hit in. Pick that subdivision up. I'm gonna rename these claws. And to move that up, we're gonna go ahead and merge this part down. So merge, merge down, say okay. Claw, glove. Oh. That's one thing we didn't texture, actually. Let's texture that real quick. That's actually, we can do that with this alpha brush right here. A little bit of a drag. And actually go ahead and apply some of this texture to it. There we go. Something like that. There we go. Now we can go ahead and kind of push that back where it needs to be. Get that texture in there. Perfect. Okay. This is the glove. All right. So now we're just going through. And as far as all the hair goes. Go ahead and solo this out. Now we're just going to start merging down. Down, say okay. Yep. 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 Just gonna group all of this hair together. Just be careful not to merge too much too quickly. Merge, merge down. Merge down. Okay. So we're gonna call this Vega hair. And then this is Vega hair tie. All right, let's go ahead and save this as number two so we have a good backup for number one. All right. Okay. Armlet's good, the bracelet's fine. All right. Actually, we can take the, the right now. No, let's leave that separate. Okay, the sash, we can merge the sash down. That way it's all, it's all one piece. Just go ahead and rename this sash. Pants will keep separate. The socks are separate. The shoes are separate. Perfect. So he's he's grouped. He's done. It's just perfect. All right. Now we can go ahead and do Chun Li's hair. So let's go through and actually make sure that her hair is applied and. As the dynamic subdivision we need. Ooh, that's a lot. We don't need 13 million. We're just gonna go through and make sure that there's no dynamic subdivisions. Okay, and we're in the base already. Luckily, there's not a whole lot. Of... She's actually a lot simpler on the build. So for this, we're gonna go ahead and merge this part down. 
and merge down. And we're going to call this her hair. Jungly hair. Uh, right. Tongue? I hate that word. I always bumble that. Okay. This is her teeth. Actually, let's rename this Chun-Li Teeth. This part is... This part is Chun-Li. Eyes. Let's see, Solo, that's both bra and underwear, so let's rename this just underwear in general. Shirt, so let's just rename that shirt. Pega doesn't get a shirt, so we can keep it simple. Perfect. Let's open this back up and let's actually rename this. Pega head, bless you. Pega teeth. It's helpful to name all your stuff uh, so that we know what it is when it gets to that point. Pega body. Second. This is the boring part of sculpting. All right. All right. So here we have a uh, Vega body. Go. Glove, claws, that's the actual claws, the glove, cl the claw glove, and his hair. The hair tie, armlets, bracelets, sash, pants, socks, shoes, perfect. All that's named correctly, let's save that. All right, so for the base, let's go ahead and rename some of the stuff. We're actually to save on on drive and CPU. So let's go ahead and rename this uh, the bookshelf. Rename uh, apartment wall. Was this grout? Uh, rename wall bricks. Actually, what we're going to do is just go ahead and we're just going to merge this down. Taking a while. This is actually a lot. Decimating these bricks is a lot. Just trying to merge. Jeez. Well, I mean, these bricks alone are 26 million because I wanted tiny details. You do sculpting, but not in a computer. You do it with your hands. Nice. I would love to see some of your works, Winky. If you want to send a picture on like Imager or my Discord, I would love to see it. I love and respect traditional sculpting so much, but uh, I've only done it a teeny, teeny little bit. Honestly, it was cheaper to learn it here for me. <laughs> I've played with a little bit of like poly polymer clay before, but nothing crazy. And this is why you save because um, Z rushes crash and hopefully it's not lagging the stream too much, but it is thinking pretty hard. Okay, well, Z brush is screaming at me.
Nice. Yeah. What kind of things do you like sculpting, Winky? Well, hello, Zebra. Should we thinking? Look at this. Look at this uh, little ring of death. <laughs> this. Yep. 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 I may have to. Uh, I may have to decimate this before merging it. Yeah. There it goes. Wait for program. Sometimes, if you wait for program, it will push through. Sometimes it will just die. ZBrush is weird like that. <gasps> there it is. There it is. There it did it. Okay, save. Save! Save! Ah, I'm doing some decimation process right now, too. Can't tell if I'm lagging or you are. Mine is going slow. Uh, I'm actually really... I'm green lit, so I don't... I think it's on your side. <laughs> My brother just confirmed. I thought I was lagging, too. I mean, this is heavy. Look at this. This this is heavy. I think what I might do is just decimate these bricks right now. And save me a little bit of processing power. And there's no point in Z-remeshing and going. I really needed all this detail. So let's go to our... Let's go to Z-plugin. Let's drag that over here. Let's go to Decimation Master. So we want to keep and use poly paint that little secret button as well as keep uvs if you have uvs but you want to decimate to bring it into like substance paint or something um that's a magic button but we don't have uvs on here i don't think maybe we do i don't i don't need them though no we don't have it so and i want to process these bricks i think we can get away with processing them at 30 percent decimation so let's just pre-process current see what happens As I tell most people, you're the problem. No! Damn it, I knew I was the problem. There's that word again. Heavy. Why are things so heavy in the future? Is there something wrong with the Earth's gravitational pull? What? what? Sorry, I had to. What's that? Is that Strickland? Is he always bald? Didn't that guy ever care? <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Yeah. He's doing this little thing called work, he says. Shh. I don't believe it. I never believe it. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. It's a good quote. I love that movie. He doesn't work he just pretends and gets a paycheck oh that's nice oh man hey drag him in chat in that comment. i would really love for that to be my case how do you do it buddy how do you do it <laughs> well while this is de uh, decimating guys and this part takes forever let's see what we got going on over here Let's see. Okay. Looks like I can upgrade my Templar. <laughs> Is he just lurking? He's like, no, seriously, guys, I'm working. I can't even chat. I can't even tell you how much I'm working. <laughs> I literally just came back. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. What were you doing? <laughs> were you working? That's what we're talking about. <laughs> I'm decimating. You got you got people quoting movies for you, next Knox. Oh, you were playing Call of Duty. You bastard. <laughs> I thought you were supposed to be working. Uh, you did. You did. <laughs> Well, how goes it now that you're here? We have your undivided attention. You do not happen to hit next game. Lunch break, my good man. 
Watch break. No, no, no. <laughs> Back to sculpting rocks. Oh boy. That sounds like fun though. Rocks can be fun. Cool. We were quoting movies and thought you would be the guy that would actually say something. Go back up and chat. You can see it. 25 of them? Or a therm? 25 rocks. I have no chat to go back up. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Carol will copy and, or Hardy will copy and paste. Whoops. Computing, that's what we're doing. We're computing. You guys can't tell because nothing's happening, but that's what's happening. <laughs> I gotta bring this decimation down. 24 control C 24. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> copy, 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 paste, 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 paste. Oh, if only it was that simple. But he wants the guy that wants each rock to have its own variation of the same crack in same but similar directions with different crevices extruding out from all different angles so that the sunlight can bounce off of one and enter another and create a heart shape when they stack them together. No, but maybe. <laughs> it's usually... Sucks control copy and then... Yeah. That's usually it. Yeah, it's usually something crazy. Not quite, but close enough. <laughs> it's always... Nextox always has a story that's crazy about how, like, it's literally to the average viewer sitting in a theater, if that was a case anymore, looking at it, it's going to be on the screen for two seconds. But Travis's boss is like, no, we need it to be a very specific angle. He'll probably bust out a ruler or something. They are crystallines and stone, too. Okay, so they do need light refraction. Right. Possibly. I'm just making a statue, man. That's all I do. <laughs> but the customers. Yeah. Well, not yeah, not just your boss, but the customers, yeah. It's a it's a twofold. It's always it's always the case. Yep. That's why I was surprised, man, when Captain Marvel came out and the Game Boy box that I rebuilt. I was sitting in there. I was surprised how much time was on screen. I was really like shocked because usually we put that much effort into something and it's there for a split second and nobody would have known, but not that time. That time there was a lot. <laughs> it's computing. It's taking forever. How are you doing, Xnox? Now that you're here, how's life going? I did these pins for Tomorrowland, and there is little chip. There's a little chip on the back, and I remember the prep master looking at it under a giant magnifying glass. Like, what the heck? Oh my gosh, really? Jesus. And they didn't show that chip that close, if they showed it at all. I don't know. I didn't see Tomorrowland. I don't get to poke fun at you in person anymore, so I have a cloud discord. <laughs> yep. We let you have it. You never saw the movie either? Okay, yeah. I saw the commercial that had the pen, I think because you showed me the, the you, that you worked on it, but aside from that, yeah. I don't think it was that close. That's still crazy, though. I actually have a curious question. It's actually about Marmoset tool bag. How much geo can tool tool bag for handle? Can you hear us summoning? Yes. Yeah, he was playing Call of Duty. Spike 
we did. And on Captain Marvel, you barely see any of the Kree or, or Kroll weapons. Yeah, especially the yeah. There's like nothing. Yep. Uh, I'm trying to. I'm wondering how much Marmoset can handle. Don't know if there's a definitive answer. Well, all right. I'm not surprised that this decimation's taking this long. Yep. But that's the perks of working in film, going back to that for a second. We get to do all this work, or we got to do all this work, and then it's barely noticed. Although I was watching something with, um, I forget what program it is, but it's something that they use to help set up the shots in CGI where the artist, the environment artist actually gets to set up a lot of the the, the locations, the the how the shots are going to look and mathematically figure out every aspect of it. And then from there, they give that to the director and everybody on set to then basically line up the shots that they've CGI and then they make those happen but they already have the tracking locked in if you follow those numbers and I thought that was pretty cool because I feel like those guys get a lot more a lot more hands-on and control of visual effects which I think is neat what are the, I forget what program that was it was on a YouTube let me see if I can find it we're just sitting here decimating at this point Let me see. Let me look at my history real quick. Well, let's close the scene. Yeah, save that. Do, 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 do. Let's see. It was a little while ago, but it was cool to like actually do like a little behind the scenes. Oh, Travis, dude, you're going to get a kick out of this. Next knives. Sorry, I keep not I'm all fumbling today. Check this out. Next knives. Here, you have to you have to check this out. You'll like this. I'm all running around now. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Let's see if I can find it real quick. a while ago. Nope, not that one. Not that one. Oh yeah, here it is. And next time, you gotta check this one out. Those are great videos. I think you'll get a kick. Alright, Stream Raiders, while we're waiting on the- Ooh, I think it did decimate. It did finish. Cool. Doesn't make current. While that's doing, let's go to Street Raiders. View battle. Yeah, that's that eye is really cool. They figured out um, uh, the first one is the Weta video where they talk about how they 3D print realistic looking eyes. And it's really cool the amount of detail that they went into it. Almost anatomically correct. Almost. But there are certain aspects that they couldn't they couldn't do even in 3D printing because there there's there's parts of the eye that just float there. And yeah, they couldn't replicate that hundred percent. But they got really damn close. Yeah. Alright. Got J. Crew and Death coming in. Alright, boss time guys, boss time. All right, bus time. Mainstream, okay. 
got to decimate that. We get to decimate it one more time. Once you process something, you don't have to generally click reprocess. You could just decimate lower again. Because it already has all that information there. We're going to try to take this as low as we can. Like what we're going to do to bring these bricks down just a little further is we're actually going to copy it. Let's turn everything off with this one. We're going to go ahead and dynamesh it at a million. And then we're going to project details. So I finally started watching Trailer Park Boys, and for a second, I thought you said J-Rock. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Trailer Park Boys. Uh, I love it. I love it. It gets really sad. Towards, like, C10. It gets really, like, sad. But I still love it. You're currently in season four. Okay. So then you've gotten past, uh, I think you've gotten past Ricky's first, uh, Julian betrayal. I think so. Is, is Ricky growing weed right now? Is that what he's doing? He's always growing weed, but you know what I mean? Like, is he really like pushing it? I need to watch more of that show. Bubbles and his kitties make me happy. Yeah. Bubbles takes a dark turn. FYI. I won't spoil it. But it gets it gets pretty sad. Alright. Let's go ahead and save this real quick. But I love Bubbles. What's crazy though is that guy had really good vision. I don't know. But then like the Coke bottle glasses. those not, He didn't really need those. I'm not sure... If it's like special so that it doesn't hurt his eyes, but it, it can't be good looking through that the whole time. Yeah, he's currently in the same field. Ricky, Ricky is stupid. <laughs> A little bit. I'm glitching a little bit. It's me. Apparently, the brain knows how to turn off. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm glitching a little bit, guys. I'm telling my computer to do a lot. I think I heard he was basically blind on set because of the glasses. Yeah, that's what I heard too. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think my computer stopped freaking out so hard, but it is like freaking out. <laughs> that's why we saved. Decimation is hard on the machine. And I'm projecting details back, so that's part of it. Yeah, it's crazy. But I, but the show's good. The show is good, and I'm... Actually, it's funny. I think they got canceled... I think they got canceled in in its original filming in the first couple of seasons. And then I think it's, I think it's season four when Netflix picked them up. Or another studio picked them up and then Netflix got it. Okay. Let's go ahead and delete this one. Okay, let's go ahead and save it. All right, there we go. Okay, so we've taken 70 million and we've already brought it down to 42 million. We 
don't need this guy anymore. All right. All right, poster. Netflix doesn't come in until eight or nine. Okay, yeah, they they got canceled a couple times. At least that's how I understood it. Because it changes production houses. I think it's season four. But yeah, it's a it's a, <laughs> it's fun nonetheless. All right. Here are the books now. So I think what we'll do for the books is we'll just merge these down. Okay. Now, of course, let me sell this out for a second. Let's go ahead and auto groups. And then let's split it in. Then these are books. And this is base. And then this is the mask. Okay, cool. All right, let's continue decimating this down a little bit. We'll start this one at a time. All right, we'll start with the easy stuff. Bless you. All right, this is already pretty low. Oh, 42 million. My Grogu wasn't this far off, and that loaded pretty nicely. No. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to try something. We're going to go ahead and save this one more time. And then let's, let's export and... Uh, and FBX. So let's send everything to high. And a delete lower. I like to delete lower when I'm getting ready to decimate or to move over, but I think Marmoset can handle this. I'm willing to put it through the test. But overall, you join the show next, Nox? Okay. Sure, that's it. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and save it as three. So I have our starting point, our merge stuff, and then our just pure high res. Let's go ahead and hit export. Let's go to FBX. Chung Lee versus Vega. Final render. Let's find out. Uh, everything that's visible. Let's see here. Yep. I don't think I need anything else. Okay. So far, so good. It's a little repetitive, but also like watching a train wreck. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's why I watched it, because it made me feel better about my life. <laughs> Sad but true. It's all right, all right. It's writing data. I think Marmoset can handle this. We'll find out. And if we do this right, we have about an hour to play with the render. I'll set up all the materials. Get to play with some of the materials. 
It'll be it'll be cool. That tattoo came out pretty nice. I'm actually pretty happy with that. I know it's a simple tattoo, but I think that worked. Mara, how's your uh, decimation going? <laughs> is looking at its thing so what's the under over that uh, tool bag handles this a oh, WandaVision yeah who wants to talk WandaVision you don't have to talk it I just want to know if you spot it but now your whole computer's running slow I'm glad it worked but yep I feel you Maybe. Come on, do you have the 3090? I'm thinking, thinking Neonar. Neonar might have had that. Oh, yeah. So, without any spoilers, Next Nox, tell me your thoughts. <laughs> yep, that's that's a good that's a good call. I agree. Leave them behind. They don't want to keep up. It's on them. Yep. Yeah, you have the 2070? Okay, cool. Yeah, I have the 2080. Yeah, I think we're thinking Neonar. My brother is curious. That's still, it's still a powerful card. I think in a couple years, I'll end up getting the, the 3090. Because by then, it'll be cheap enough. Huh? Yep. I haven't seen the movie. Wait, I haven't seen the movie I need to see, but otherwise excited to see where they were go with this. Loving it so far. Oh, wait, you haven't. Which which movie are you referring to that you need to see? Is it Age of Ultron or was it. Um... Yeah, that's weird. Well, for a long time it was Looper. No, it took him like eight years holding my Blu-ray to finally see it. That would be a spoiler. What do you mean that would be a spoiler? You said you haven't seen the movie you you need to see, but you're otherwise excited about WandaVision. So what movie would that be? That's not a spoiler. If we're talking about all current movies, unless you're talking about a movie that doesn't exist right now, then that's different. But then that that then we all need to see that movie. So that's a weird statement. It's a very dodgy way of, of that's sus, my friend. It's very it's sus. Fake. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can understand not seeing Age of Ultron. That movie sucked. Did you not see Endgame? Oh no, I'll, I'll show you in a second. I'd like to speak to your manager. <laughs> I don't think it's necessary, though. No. 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 I don't think that's necessary. No. If that's it, I don't think that's necessary. I've seen that. I, yeah. I've seen that. No. I don't think that's necessary. I've seen that movie. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen it too. 
It's clearly owned by Fox at the time. <laughs> You'll understand why you can't talk about the movie after you've seen it. Yeah. Well, if it's the one that I was just shown, then I've seen it, and now I know. And, uh, yep. No. You know, you could have just texted me. You know, you would have. You couldn't just text it. You could have just sent. sent. What? Use technology? Right, exactly. I also have Messenger. Well, no, I don't think that's necessary. But, you know. I like where they're going with it. That's all I'm going to say. I think it's great. Uh, there's a film theory that's pretty close to what's going on. That I think I think they did a good job there. Oh, we're at the base. Oh, oh, we did it! Like, all right. Oh, it's writing data still. It's still working. You have to go. All right, no problem. I need to sleep now. Enjoy ya. Have a good one. Thanks for showing up, buddy. Always appreciate you here. See you guys Friday. We got about another hour here. At this point, <laughs> hopefully, it's not an hour of just trying to export this. <laughs> Like, great stream, guys. We have a let's chat moment for an hour. Where we sit there and we talk to our Bob Ross. Deadpool. This is what we got going. Yeah. find a way to incorporate him in my streams. Oh, we got that blue wheel. Looks perfect to me. Oh, yeah. It's rendering. It's doing its thing. He only uses one fucking character over and over again. I hope he's just a shit. That's because you're not equally distributing the love to your character. Because it would take fucking forever when I wanted to get the reward for level 20. Well, Don't judge me. This isn't Final Fantasy. Don't judge me. Well, you think I'm that dedicated to the game. <laughs> Don't worry, Stream Raiders will die. The trend will go down. And there'll be a new game, and all this time and energy spent building up all your characters will have been for nothing. He did. All right, let's go ahead and save this one more time. Nope, that's for a special fans only page. There's an only fan page somewhere around there. I'm sure this came up at one point. Yeah, it wouldn't be the first. All right. Now, oh, somebody tagged me in something. Oh, I wish it was. <laughs> Here we go, guys. Too bad. Yeah, need more reward. Exactly. All right. Let's see how Marvin Set handles this. Import model. <laughs> Let's see if we can um, outperform our GPU. Here we go. This is the real test. 42.5 million polys. Active points. Whatever we want to call them. I'll be surprised if it loads. Make some more streamer friends and you won't have that problem. Oh, that's sad. Travis works all the time, playing Call of Duty. 
You can't, you can't attack him for that. <laughs> What's up, buddy? What's funny is uh, next Nox, um his his picture looks like he's just staring at me. No matter where you move, he's at that right angle. In the chat, so I just see it in the chat. <laughs> there are dedicated stream raider streams tried some for a bit grind yeah exactly then there's this lovely entertainment where you we, we see how much armasek can handle <laughs> Loaded pretty nicely, actually. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and save scene, and let's do Eve versus Vega. That's you, Rand final render. Bloop. All right, I'm actually really surprised that loaded very quickly. Maybe because I'm actually using my GPU now. Yeah. Well, let's find out. Don't let's not talk too soon. Okay. Okay. First thing we're gonna do is come here. Let's start deleting all the materials we don't need. I don't like the default materials it comes with. I like to do one material at a time. All right. I'm going to go ahead and add a material. And we're going to call this skin. So this will be the overall skin material. Go ahead and save scene. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this. We're gonna drag this on over and then we're gonna go to Albedo like I showed yesterday and Vertex Color. And what this will do is bring that poly paint on over. And now we're going to go ahead and start getting this looking the way we want it to. And we'll just do this one material at a time. So I like to do roughness and we'll kick the roughness up just a bit. So we don't want that chalky look. And then let's go to... it yeah specular and the intensity will be down a little bit but the, the nail will come down just give us a little bit of a highlight there we go that looks pretty cool we're gonna take that same material and we're gonna drag and drop it on his chest. Actually, if we come here on the side, we have it all named here, which is nice. So Vega head, you just drag this over to here and apply it.
Why did it do that? I didn't want that there. Okay. Might be a little laggy, but I'm also streaming, so. Throw that on there. There we go. Throw that on there. There we go. Just like such. Now let's go ahead and save it. Save scene. Let me know if this is really heavy on the stream or not, just because it's a little laggy performance wise, but I'm also pushing it at a very high. It would probably be wise for me to go back and decimate this for an easier workflow, but that's just gonna take a long time. So I may do that after the stream. We can see here our colors are looking pretty good. Everything's showing up pretty nice. Let's actually duplicate this. And we'll call this hair. I'll actually drag and drop that on the hair. Have you tried Marmoset Toolbag? That's actually what I'm in right now. I'm in Marmoset Toolbag 4. Uh, um, I will, I haven't used it as often, um, but uh, I'm getting getting a little bit better at it. Oh, it's Marmoset, sorry. <laughs> I am with mobile. No, you're totally fine. No worry. That's all right. How are you doing? Also, too, I have a really heavy file in here. Um, so, might be a little laggy. I may I may stop. I just wanted to know how much Marmoset can handle, and I'm actually surprised that it's handling this file, which is about 42 million active points. It's actually handling it fairly well. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty impressed with it, but I think the more I push it, the more it's just going to collapse at this point. So, because it, it is definitely, it is definitely lagging on me, but I was being lazy and didn't really want to decimate, but I think I'm gonna have to do that. So let's go ahead and back this out. And let's go back to ZBrush and let's decimate. Oh, it's Marvis. Uh, what about Keyshot? I've used Keyshot back at Keyshot 6, Keyshot 7, and it was pretty good. I liked it. Um, but um, I think Marmoset Toolbag is a lot better uh, once they, because they added in a lot of texture features. There was, there was a lot, there's a lot more added to it. Where Keyshot is still great because of the arc, because uh, of its architecture and everything it's designed for, but it's it was too expensive for what I needed it for. Oh, I just closed it. It it did, yeah. It was really nice. Yeah, I want to know which one is better for simple rendered without poly paints or anything. For simple renders without poly paint or anything, I mean, I think that comes down to preference. Um, Keyshot is simple and it's great. So if you just want to like throw something in and then and then add in a couple materials and call it a day. Uh Keyshot's great for that. Marmoset tool bag, you can do the same thing, but I would say Keyshot would be simpler up at its forefront in my opinion. Where Marmoset there's a lot more to do, but again it's preference. Key Keyshot is super simple, like Next Knock said, yeah. I have to try Marmoset again now that I'm doing more painting and such. Last time I used it, I was trying to render my CAD models. Oh, interesting, yeah. Yeah, I want cool looking renders for sculpts. Yeah, both programs will get you that, but Keyshot is a lot simpler if you're looking for more of a drag and drop, drag and drop option. Okay. 
Okay. So we're at this point where I'm going to decimate everything. Um, and yeah, it's it's going to take a moment. But we definitely need to lighten this, this file up. So let's go to... Let's go to Z plugin. Let's go to Decimation Master. We're going to choose Use and Keep Poly Paint. And then we'll keep this at 25%. And then we're going to pre process everything. I want cool looking renders. Yeah, exactly. So, no, Keyshot would be great for that. My problem with Keyshot is that it's expensive. So, if you want the full pro version of Keyshot, I believe with the. If you get it through, like, buying through Pixel Logic, if you're using ZBrush, I believe it's, like, $550 for the Pro version, where Marmoset Toolbag was $300, and in my opinion, it's just as good, but it is not as... It, but it's not as simple of, a, of an approach. There's definitely a lot of setup involved. Okay, pre-process was good. Oh, pre-process all. I hit the wrong one. So yeah, that's my opinion though. I mean, I like I said, I use Keyshot back with Keyshot six into Keyshot seven, and then um, and then I couldn't afford to buy another license. And now I used to use Blender a lot, so I'm used to Blender's. I'm used to Blender got a control every aspect approach, which Blender's fine. I think Blender's just really complicated for what it is. Where Marmoset's a little bit more simpler than that. It's a little bit more streamlined. But Blender's really great too. You just have to learn how to use it. So yeah, definitely is. Money is not an issue. My company will pay for it. Oh, well then if that's the case, then go with Keysha. <laughs> yeah, you want you wanna if you're if it's a company purchase, yeah, Keyshot. Keyshot Pro. Get it. Get it. It's easy. Marmoset's good. You have Marmoset now? Nice. Yeah. Keyshot all the way. Battles ready? Okay, cool. Yeah. I like them both. I really do. It's just it's just all about what it, what it is you want. And it, if if you're looking for simple and fast key shot, yeah, I agree. Yeah. But I use it for bakes only. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Because Marmoset, in my opinion, is one of the best baker engines out there. I find it better than Substance Painter. That's just, again, that's my opinion. I know there are people who like Substance Painter, and I'm never knocking one software or other. They all have, like, their pros and cons. Hey, look. It's me with the most kills. And it's Kamara with the most assists. Best. The best. J Crew. And Slow Art. There you go. Yeah. All right. We got time for another one. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's see. Where do we want to go? Let's go top. All right, and let's see. Do I, what, what, what do I need to see? Place three tanks. Okay. All right. You know, I placed a reindeer tank, and it didn't give it to me at one time. I think the wind is blowing again. Oh, there it goes. Now it recognizes it. Bastard. <laughs> Speaking of the best, you're the best man. Oh, dude. Thanks, man. Just know how to make my day. Thank you. <laughs> well, right now we're decimating. I'm glad you guys like this piece. This piece is a lot of fun. Probably one of my, one of my uh, longest projects so far to date. And I can't wait to slice it up and get it ready for 3D print. Uh, looks like I should have it next week. I got to finish articulating my Vegeta. 
Um, I might release my Articulated Vegeta for trial testing on um, on my Patreon. I might do that. If anybody's interested in printing that without confir without me confirming that it works 100%, let me know. Um, I know the joints should technically work based on all the math I've done, but I just don't have a lot of time of printing. I also might reach out to Uncle Jesse and see if it's something he'd be interested in. Because um, then it would be good to have some feedback. But, and if it did work, then yay, it'd be done. I'm trying to keep it this articulation project a little simple. Um, I'm trying not to go too, too crazy with it because I feel like I'm controlling a lot on all sides. But I think at the end of the day, um, it's definitely near complete. And I want to release that for my Patreon as well as release this. So, so yeah, I'm excited about it. I don't know if you guys would be interested in that too. If you guys want to ever test one of my files, let me know. In fact, I'm thinking about it and I'm saying it out loud. I might just text now. I think Substance has been amazing, especially before Adobe got it. It was the first program I was that I was uh, to be able to handle the BPR texture painting in 3D. A marmoset decided to. Uh, iterate on substance and now their texturing is so good plus their baking and rendering has always been better yes i completely 100 percent agree with that statement everything you said hands down i agree okay Articulated Vegeta. Okay, I'm actually just messaging Uncle Jesse and telling him, asking if he'd be interested in doing it. Okay, because if he would, that'd be great. He'd be doing me a favor. But I know he's, he has some things in mind, so that'd be kind of cool. But yeah. Oh my gosh, decimation. It's taking forever. But it is 42.5 million polys. And I was really impressed with Marmoset handling that. While streaming. I'm sure it'd be okay off stream, but we gotta bring this number down. A render shouldn't be that heavy. I think it would kill when I finally clicked render. <laughs> but what I also love about Marmoset too, is I'd be able to produce a, um, a Marmoset viewer render in re so you'd be able to look at it in relatively real time and see all the coloring that I did, all the materials that was used, uh, what, what would be considered reflective, what would be not, um, the wireframe even, although it'd be decimated so nobody would want to look at that wireframe. But that's always a cool little thing that I love that Marmoset does that I wish other programs did. Uh, and that's good for portfolio because then the viewer gets to go in and look at your model and zoom in and get all the information and stuff. Also, that could be risky. <laughs> if you're trying to hide something, then they might see it, but I, I always appreciated that as being one of their features. And with ArtStation being so heavy, uh, if you have the pro version of it, then you can upload those files easily and then people can really, really take a look, which is always so nice. Of course, this is a personal piece too. So what I like about personal pieces is, you know, as long as everything anatomically is correct and the pose looks good, you know, everything else is normally fine. Oh. 
Okay, okay, okay. And what I like to do with Decimation too is I like to, once it's decimated, I decimate everything. Then I zoom in on all the things that might be unnecessary to decimate, and I control Z those. So like eyeballs usually get crushed, so I kind of control Z those. It's easier to control Z than hit decimate current on each and every piece. I find this process to be overall time saving, uh, but generally you would just like hit process and then walk away for however long it took. Oh, it's slow, it's slow, slow, slow. Well, while it's doing that, we can take a look at some things. It's usually where I buy everything. Right, Paladin scrolls, Barbarian scrolls, Rally Warriors. Scrolls. All right, perfect. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and buy all that. It's very 80s music right now. I love it. Oh, you could just do that? Cool. Look at that. Nice. I didn't know you could do that. I think I'll pick up the subscription to try it out for a bit. Whenever I have a new project to throw in there. Yeah. Actually, you know what would be really cool? Is if you threw in your, um... Your, um... Oh my god, I'm blanking on his name. The voodoo guy. From Princess and the Frog. If you threw him in, that would be because you did substance work on him, right? So I think it'd be kind of cool if you threw his him in just to kind of have it as like a uh, like texture him in marmot set tool back four, and then give yourself a uh, and then compare the two what you like and don't like about it. That could be cool. Still computing. Not surprised. Yeah, I think we might call the stream a little early after this stream, Raiders, because I have a feeling this computing is going to take a long time. And I got nothing else to do. <laughs> Can't really do anything when it's just thinking. It's literally taking up all my processing. I still haven't done any renders showing off the actual details on them. <laughs> Well, you're a busy guy, man. You're a busy guy. Yeah, I think we're going to call it. I think I'll hit stream raiders and hit play, so I won't let that lapse, even though I'm not streaming, but I don't want to bore you guys. This is going to take way too long. So, everybody, guys, thank you so much for hanging out. Is there anybody you guys want to raid? We'll end this a little early. Who shall we raid? Is Kana stream? I haven't raided her in a while. Yeah, let's let's go. Let's go to the Kana. Let's go to the Kana. <laughs> let's go hang out with her for a minute. How much should I get paid for a game character Blizzard Overwatch quality? I just want to know your opinion. You want to know my opinion? Um. Okay. Completely 100% opinion only. I would say what you would want to do. Uh, hold on a second, I got an echo. Hold on. Cancel that. Okay. Um, opinion only. What I would suggest you do is factor in the area that you live in and kind of research what contract work what contractor workers would would be um if it was me uh i'll give you kind of like fluff numbers if it was me that character could take me between four to six weeks to make game ready and i would probably want to land somewhere between you know i oh, see this is tough 
I think you would want to research. I, I would research your area. It's hard to say because I don't want to give you a definitive number and and say what you would, you know. But there are ways to kind of look it up. I mean, maybe land somewhere like on around 50 an hour, 60 an hour. That You could do something like that. It's hard to say um, because a lot of those guys work in studio and they work on contracts and they're paid based on their funding. And that gets tricky. You have to kind of balance when you should charge the most and when you should work with a studio. It's really hard to say. It's all negos. It's all negotiations. Um, but I mean, I would charge a. I would charge. Cup. I. I would charge like about a couple grand, opinion wise. I would land somewhere around there. Because it's a lot of work. That's my opinion. I would. You know. A lot of that comes down to negotiations and stuff like that. I just don't like giving definitive answers because that there's a lot of factors involved. There's, um, but let's say Blizzard came to you and said, four to six weeks, game ready character, can you do it? Yeah, find a comfortable number you're on. And for me, you know, I would easily be thinking right out the gate like two thousand dollars. That that would be my start price in my head. But then I would ask them questions like, you know. Um, what is it that you're looking for? What is it you are requiring of me? And once you have all that information, if you have the experience of manually retopoing, um, texturing, baking, doing all that stuff, then you'll have an idea of what your time is worth. And if you research your area on what the average person, like go to Glassdoor and type in what a character artist for games would make in your area. That should give you a really good idea too. So basically my character worth at least two grand. It can, yeah, absolutely. Because it, it's a specialized skill set. And that's that's where it may, that's where it makes tricky. Because I've I've charged as little as two hundred and I've charged as much as two grand. Just depends on what you're doing and it depends on who's buying. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't quote the average person, you know, like a Joe Blow down the street. I wouldn't quote my neighbor two grand to sculpt him a statue. Just, he, he won't be able to afford it. But a couple hundred bucks, yes, absolutely. Um, a, a game studio, they know what they're asking. And luckily, if it was something like Blizzard, look up, oh, here's what you could do. Look up what, um, what the, that job position yearly wage is, gross and factor in how long you think it would take you. So it, let's say they get paid 85,000 a year and you're working six weeks, take that 85,000, divide that by the amount of weeks of the year, so 50, and then that's your base weekly pay, gross. And then from there, factor in how long you think it would take. It's, it's just, there's just a lot of variables and that's why I'm hesitant to give you something solid. I don't wanna mislead you either. There's just a lot of factors at work. I could say mine around the style quality are around three to six thousand per character, but I'm working for an indie studio. I'm in the New York area. This is my first industry job. Each character is different. Exactly. And that's where it makes it hard to, to give accurate quotes like that. At the end of the day, you should know three things in my opinion. One, how good of an artist are you? and be realistic based on what it is you're being asked to do. Two, be realistic with time frames. I've had people say, hey, I want five characters in two weeks. Can you do it? No, no way. I, I don't care how good I am. I can have all the base meshes ready in the world. Uh, you know what kind of grind that would be? It'd be stupid. And then the final thing is value yourself based on your current level and what the industry is expecting. And I think with those things in mind, you'll be able to kind of ascertain what direction you should go. Luckily for me, I'm a toy maker, so I'm kind of on the bottom side of this, but it still takes time because we're a specialized skill. And so there's ebb and flow with learning to work with personal clients versus studios. Yeah, it's just a lot. And I never like answering that question definitively because again, it, it really does depend solely on 
on your area. What I mean, not solely. It greatly depends on your area, what studio you're working with, what the character looks like. I mean, I'll tell you right now, I would not charge the same for a hard surface character versus an organic character. It's too many, you know, especially if you're looking at like crazy mechanical parts. Yeah, that's that's going to get tricky. And if they want it to look functional, to look real, that's more time. So you definitely want to set yourself up with what you think you're worth per hour, because then that that will help control the quote per character. That makes sense. Yes, and don't forget to calculate self-employment tax. Exactly. Five Minecraft characters in two weeks. Oh, Minecraft. Get out of here, come on. <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> yeah, again, it depends on the road. It depends on the artwork. It depends on all that good stuff. Um, there's just so much going on. It's hard to say, yeah. And, and, and Slow B Art makes a very valid point with, um, you know, what does it take to be a successful contractor? Because that's what you essentially are. You're a contractor. You're getting paid. Um, you're getting hired by a company who doesn't want you in the studio but wants you to do work and send that work in. That's contract work. Um, that means that you want to charge not only what your hourly worth is for your day-to-day -day expenses, but also the amount of taxes you'll be paying, the vacation time you're going to be wanting to take from time to time, the amount of time it'll take you to find the next job when you're done with that job, especially if you're not grant guaranteed more than one work from whoever's hiring you, um, taxes. Um, also, too, I mean, you could get as crazy as like monitoring your electric bill and how much influx your electric bill has i mean how much power do you generate turning on your machine with an 850 power watt supply system running for 12 hours a day there's a lot there god i take way less <laughs> take way less of this yeah there's just so much and this is where the hesitation comes in you know because it's you know so that's why i said in my opinion and hopefully this is helpful to you because I'm still learning it too. I, I've been freelance contracting for this last year, very slowly. Um, I'm still trying to find, I would love to work with a studio and just be an employee of a studio, but there's more freedom in contracting, but there's more risk. So you kind of have to like balance it all out. Also too, yeah, slow B art, software, computer parts. You know, if your motherboard blows like mine did, you got to pay for that, but that becomes a write-off depending on how your taxes work, depending on what country you're in. In the U.S., that becomes a write-off, but I'm in California, so I had to create an LLC, meaning I have to become a corporation myself in order to do business in California anymore for freelance. So it gets tricky, but all that can be written off. They don't care about time, but I get paid 500 per character indie company. Okay, yeah, so that sounds more like an agreement, which... While that can be cool, that could be risky over time. But you're getting game experience too. You got to factor that into how much experience are you getting? How much time is there invested? There's so many factors. But value yourself. Figure out what you feel you're worth. Compare that to what others consider you're worth. Find that, that happy medium and, and go from there. It is way better to be a corporation as a freelancer. I agree with that 100%. Yeah, I'm learning that the more and more I do this. Mine take me a few weeks. If I was getting 500 per character, that's less than minimum wage. Absolutely. But I get money after they sell the game too. Okay, so you get royalties. Interesting. So that's a definitely a very interesting... Uh, you get 25% royalties. So that's, a, that's an agreement. Yeah, I, I have no business on saying what that is for you. I would just, you know, take that experience. You're getting work, you're getting experience and always be willing to to better yourself. That's that's what I would give you. Bigger companies consider it a deal breaker to deal with sole proprietors in some cases. Yeah, that was actually a big thing in California. Um, it's gotten so bad that they don't want 1099s anymore. There's so much liability that they would rather deal with a corporation and by Granting yourself an LLC, paying the near $1,000 to do it, um, it's beneficial. 
you can make Overwatch quality character. Well, then the next company you go to work with, you know, really just consider all of those factors and what it is being offered on the table. And then from there, make a make an educated decision based on your experience and the uh, the resources you have at your fingertips. You don't get royalties, it's all relative, yeah. I haven't worked with enough studios to tell you if that's a good or bad thing. And I, I, as a freelancer, I would say, you know, I'm, all my money needs to come up front. So that's just, that's my opinion currently. <laughs> so hopefully that's helpful in any way, shape or form. If nothing else, it's just an opinion piece. Um, don't quote me on it. Just be careful and always, always look out for what it is you're wanting to achieve and go, and go with your gut. Your developer is your closest friend. So that works. Cool. Yeah. He's the owner of a company. That's cool. So cool. You get to work with a friend and, and, and such. That's nice, man. Yeah. I worked with a buddy of mine in one of his studios. He, he did, he was a print, he was a print shop. I sculpted for him for about a year. It was pretty cool, but I had to move on just because he wasn't growing. And I don't think that company actually exists anymore. I think he faulted it. But it's okay. But anyway, well, in that in that crazy conversation that took up, which is cool. I really like that, by the way. Uh, let's take a look because the decimation did go through. But uh, we'll wait the seven minutes and then we'll raid Kana. I just want to take a look at how this is. But hopefully that was helpful in, you know, and again, um, always just consider what it is you're, you're wanting to do and where you want to go and have each job you take, take you to that goal. Yeah, no problem. For the specific game I'm working on, I would hesitate to take royalties. I believe in the game, but it's VR, so I'm not convinced publishers will make it, will believe in it. Yeah, it was not, not a problem, not a problem. Yeah, but hopefully too, that gives a little bit of insight on why there's a, there's a lot of artists who are hesitant to talk about it because there's just a lot of deciding factors. And two, in this world of 3D, there are names, you know, I guarantee you there's studios who say, oh, well, I know there's this guy who's really good, but Rafael Grissetti's amazing. I'll wait for him. If they can afford it, that's, you know, there, there's that too. There's a little bit of celebrity artist happening, I noticed. Um, and that's pretty cool, but also too, you know, if we're, if we're starting up, I had to take whatever I could get. I made a shitty little Baby Yoda um, as my first gig so that I could get my experience with working with companies. And then... Um, started making more and more stuff and then ended up working with the film industry to sculpt for them uh, to make some really cool stuff that's still under NDA right now. But each job I took helped me with that experience. And that took me to the next the next decision. And I feel like it's always a learning curve. And uh, before you know it, you know, you'll be classified as a digital sculptor and artist in general, and then you'll be able to kind of just like say, well, I've done this, I've done that, I've done this. And don't be afraid to quote what you think you're worth. Don't be afraid to go a little higher. Everybody thinks you inflate your number anyway. So don't be afraid to inflate it if you think it's appropriate. You know, I've done that before. Where I'm like, I think I can do this. And the negotiation process started where they said, that's too much money, but I can do this. And I was like, mm, okay, yeah, that's fine. It happens. It's, it's all a learning experience. Yeah. And for me, I'm not I'm not trying to work in games. I'm working with toys. So luckily my process is a little bit different in the streamline, but also too, I feel like, you know, I'm a little bit lower on the pay scale. Because <laughs> I don't have to do as much. I just I'm, I'm charging for my, my technical ability to sculpt and 3D print. But it's still a specialized skill in which I value. Yeah. There's a Neil Gaiman commencement speech where he talks about how your career is your mountain and you should always be trying to get to your mountain so you can start to climb 
I'll post the link in the Discord. Yeah, do it. That'd be great. One of my favorite motivational videos. Yes, that makes perfect sense. Absolutely. I would love to hear that. Thanks, Gamora. Yeah, I worked with them because of my friend and I believe in games. So 25% is a lot. Yeah, you know. My my advice I will freely give. Um, my last little bit of advice I would freely give, and it's it's crucial for me working with anybody, is I do not want to be pigeonheld to only working with that one studio. As a freelancer, I need the ability to work with other studios or other people in order to bring in the amount of money I need. And so um, I just signed a, a NDA with, with someone who allowed that to happen. They said I was able, as long as I maintain the current standing of what I was signing, I was able to then move forward with, um, with working with other people. So basically saying, as long as I don't spill trade secrets, quote, then you're able to do that. So for me, that's important. I need to be able to, you know, being exclusive for me means I'm working at that studio, means I'm working for Sideshow, right? Like, let's say I got that, then I better be getting constant work from that company. And if I'm not, I'm being tossed like a job or two every once in a while, I can't be held to that one company. So for me, it's imperative that I have the ability to freelance with other people because um, I can keep my mouth shut. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, so that's the thing too. So, you know, that's something to look forward. And that's something I look, look at is not being able to be locked down. I want to be able to spread my sculpting abilities as desired. <laughs> Now, I don't know how many exclusive contracts there are out there. I can't imagine there being a whole, whole lot, but, you know. Now, I'm going to make a good portfolio with things I'm making for them. Yeah, absolutely. Just make sure, just get, you know, make sure all your stuff is legit, that all your stuff is, is, is you know, is backed accordingly. Yeah, but that's awesome. I'm really excited to hear that you're working and that you're working with a company and stuff. All that's experience, you know. What we say in this, at least you know, what I've heard in my business talks is, um, uh, we're going to call this decimated, um, is your first year of any business, you're going to lose money. No problem. You're going to lose it. So don't think about, you know, your first year of business um, or your first year of working with somebody if you're not making enough money, you know, but you are making money. It, there is loss in the first year of doing things. So just be, you know, so my point with that is um, it's easy to dwell on the negative value or what you're not earning. But but as long as you're achieving your goals to move forward and to eventually start charging what you are what you are worth, you're moving in a good direction. Yeah, I can find my next job much easier. Exactly. With a great portfolio, you could find a great job. Yep. So. Anyway, we're going to end it on that, but I think this was a, that was a great conversation, guys. Thank you for asking and, and stuff like that. And if you guys have any other opinions and stuff, we can continue this in Discord. You can always always bring it. But yeah, that's that's just kind of where, where it's all at. And I can't wait to listen to that speech. That's going to be awesome. Now, let's go... Let's go... Stream Raid? And then we're going to Raid Kana. All right, here we go, here we go. Here we go, here we go! There we go. All right. Do it, do it. Two more enemies, one more enemy. Murder. Okay. Awesome, awesome. And the winners are Kamara, Witch Cat, Slow Art, yay! All right, guys, that is it for this part today. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I super, super duper appreciate it. You guys are always amazing, and it's always great hanging out with all of you. 
No problem. Anytime. Thank you for the great questions, too, by the way. Those are always so much, so much fun. All right. Everybody take care, and I'll see you guys Friday, and I'll see you in the Discord. Hang out, hit me up, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Call this type of music mashing the potato. <laughs> Ian, how's it going? I was lurking over there. I don't mean I'm always lurking over there. Um, hey, Kmar, what's going on? Um, uh, it, was, it was looking, it's looking awesome as usual. If you guys who are here haven't been to Ian's stream, you need to go over there. He does really, really cool, mostly fan art of pop culture stuff uh star wars uh currently street fighter sometimes spawn lots of really